early, baby. Set it early. Party! Chiefed up the best damn Kansas City Chiefs podcast in the kingdom. Yeah, what's up? What's up, Chiefs Kingdom ACU crew? Welcome back to another podcast uh, for that ass. This is a live on the night stay. We're doing a Sunday night tailgate, even though there is no game on Sunday, we're still tailgating out here. I guess that's what you can call it. We're sitting around wondering what the hell is going on with Legereus Sneed. We're having a Legereus Sneed tailgate party all day long, Steve. Every single Twitter, every single person on there has turned into Adam Schefter, Ian Rappaport. Everybody's calling it. They're calling it. And so far, everybody's been wrong. Because <laughs> they haven't done nothing. That's why they're wrong. Yeah. The Chiefs haven't done nothing. Nobody's done nothing. But people are very interested in what's going on. We're going to... We're going to get to everything that's been going on today, Steve, because I'm sure you've been at work a little bit, so I don't even know if you've been caught up on all the drama that's happened today. Uh, not really. But, but we got a little, little Colts drama. We got a little Titans drama, a little inter interdivision rivalry going right there. Yeah, for sure. Shout out to everybody for being here tonight. We got Spencer Sims. He says, new here, just found this podcast because of a guy at work. There you go, Hell Spencer. yeah. Whoever the guy at work is, is doing the Lord's work. Yeah, he's doing the well, Lord's work, Spencer. Let's go, baby. Go ahead and hit that like button. Hit that sub button, Spencer. Take some time. Spend some time with us. Um, what's up, Steven? Steven said, what's up, Mike? And Steve? What's up, brother? Good to see you. What's up, man? Yeah, man. Let's just jump right in. We, we promised the people Sneed rumors. We already got almost 300 people in here. Sneed is a hot subject. We may have some... If, if you guys are Colts fans, if you guys are Titans fans, uh, welcome. Join. Welcome talk in. to us. Uh, we'd like to know what you guys think about this, too, and if what the compensation may be that you think that you should give, what you can't, because we've been talking to Chiefs fans all week long about compensation, Steve, and Chiefs fans are under the impression that, A, if you don't get three, four, five, six number one round picks for Legereus <laughs> Need, we just need to keep the guy and pay him $20 million. Mike, they've lost their damn minds talking about Legereus Need, brother. They've lost it. I get it. Did you see what I wrote on X, though? I said that the people are not understanding how this works from the GM side. We're seeing it from a purely fan perspective. The Chiefs are not trying to get equal compensation for what Snead is worth. No, man. That's what I was trying to explain the other day when I was on here talking about Hollywood. Now, with Legereus Snead, it's like, yes, Legereus Snead is such a good player. I guess if you think he's worth a first rounder, that's fine. I think Legereus Snead being the top corner in football – could very well be worth a first-round pick. But everyone knows that's not going to happen. Like, like the thing with Snead is, it's like, you're more looking at it this way. Like, we can't pay the guy. We're not going right. to pay him $19.5 on the tag. We're not going to – we can't extend him. We don't have the money to pay Boy, what he's earned. 19.8, actually, on the tag. Right. Okay. But what he's earned, as far as what he's going to get paid yearly, we can't afford it. So what can we get? Because instead of just letting them walk and not getting a damn thing, we can get a round two pick and maybe a fifth with it or a third and a something else. I don't know. They're going to take whatever they can get. And it's not because they don't think he's worth right. more. It's just people aren't stupid. They're not trying to hand out a first round pick for no reason. Right. It's also one of those things too. It's like if the chiefs do not get a deal and we're forced to keep them on the, on the, uh, Tag. The tag. We're not going to cut him. Like, that's not going to happen. So the Chiefs would be handcuffed into trying to figure out how to sign him, how to sign all their rookies, how to sign their practice squad. Um, Veach has still got to probably fill, what, 15 more roster spots or something around that at this point. It, it's pretty crazy right now. So we're not trying to get what Snead is exactly worth. Because why? There really isn't a market for what Snead's worth. He's a corner. Right. He's 27. He does have a little bit of a nagging knee injury. Again, he didn't miss any time for it, but teams know this stuff. And believe me, when it comes to negotiation time, Steve, they're going to use that against you. Of course here, they are. Here's the rundown of what we got so far. So last night, Paul Kuharski, who reports for the Titans, the NFL, he come out and said right at the end of the day, the Titans are not in it for Legereus Sneed at this point. 
Okay, so right then and there, everybody said, look, the Colts were the big, the name of the game, Steve. Me and you were talking about the Titans days and days ago. We were talking about the Titans were maybe in on Sneed. And a lot of right. people said, what? What? And then they come out and they paid a bunch of money to Calvin Ridley, but they mm-hmm. still got a lot of cap money. They're somewhere around $25, $30 million, maybe I think more. They're, I think they're still very much in play on Sneed. I think they are because of the Colts. I think it's an interdivision battle going on. Neither one wants to see the other one. And they're both trying to keep pace with the Jags and the Texans, who, by the way, have signed every single person to come on the the, the entire free agent market this year. And the Texans, by the way, I've been digging on these guys. Apparently, the Texans are willing to give up their high, high second round pick right now, according to old Bean up in Buffalo, to maybe acquire Stephon Diggs. Like, this is becoming, the Texans are becoming the new super team. They're trying to build a super team. Like, it, it's insane what they're trying to do. But back to Sneed. So here we go with Sneed again. So then this come out this morning, bright and early. Destin Adams comes out and says, Sources tell myself in A to Z Sports NFL that the Chiefs and Colts are ironing out the final details on a trade that will send the star to Indy. I'm told the Colts are sending a 2024 2024 third and an additional pick in 2025. Steve, Chiefs fans' heads exploded. Of course they did. Because they they only got a third round Mm -hmm. and a 2025 additional pick that by the way wasn't even completely named so everybody's like was it going to be a second is it going to be a first in the 20 no it's not (laughs) no that would have been probably like a a third fourth fifth rounder maybe a sixth even at that point mike i will my head will explode like if they were to be able to get a first round pick out of them because i really just don't see it happening i do too i do believe what brett veach has on his hands it's pretty much a well-played, perfect scenario here for Legarius Sneed. If you have to keep, look, you got three options. You trade them to the Colts, you trade them to the Titans, you keep them. Okay? Option number three, the one you don't want is to keep them. And I know Chiefs Kingdom's head's going to explode to that one. But you can't afford to keep every single person, and our roster's not built to keep Sneed. Would he be great on this team? Yes. Would I like to see it? Yes. Would I love to see him win three in a row? Absolutely. But the way this roster is laid out, Steve, corner is very deep. We've got tons of other needs. We've yet to touch a defensive end. We've yet to touch a a left tackle. Um, We only got to sign one wide receiver, albeit a nice wide receiver signed by by Veach. But we could be in play to maybe look at somebody else. I still think it's draft. But the point is, that was your number three option. That's what you don't want to do. Colts, right. Titans, who cares? At this point, let those two battle it out and see who you can get the most out of. And the reason for that is Brett Veach, like it, Brett Veach and crew are playing chess right now. Like when you have a dynasty going like this, or you have a Patrick Mahomes on your team, you're always up looking a season or two ahead. I mean, you have to be ahead of the game. You have to be. So I'm Snead is not, there's no way that paying $20 million a year for a corner is in those plans. There's just well, no way. It makes no sense. Steve, that's the tag. Okay. Right. Right. I know but I'm just saying roughly. Right. Uh, that's not what they're planning to do. Right. So if they have to keep him, that that interrupts the plans they have going forward. So if you get to keep Sneed this year, and uh, you know Chiefs fans would be happy about that because everybody loves Sneed, and like you can't argue with it. You still got the best corner in football. But what are you sacrificing in the next couple of years because of it? Right. That's why I say it's it's option number three. If you have right. to pay Sneed twenty million. What did you maybe pass up here? What did you maybe not be able to pass up this season? What do you have to kick the can down the road on for the next two or three? Well, anyways, here we go. Back to the Sneed saga. Matt Verderam comes out this morning, writes for SI. We all know him. He said, on the Sneed front, I'm told the main sticking point has been Sneed's asking price, Steve. The Colts and Titans are two of the top teams trying to execute the trade, but Sneed's camp is asking too much as a trade value for Sneed. And for now, Sneed remains in KC on a 19.8 million tag, Steve. What is Sneed trying to do? A little bit of digging says he's asking for 22 to 23 million per year. Is that what you want to get the Chiefs stuck trying to pay? No, absolutely not. Right, but then they'll say, well, you don't have to. Let them play on the tag for 19.8. That still sucks. Dude, you would almost be better off paying them 22 over three years and somehow <laughs> somehow using the whole 
first season cap number not too big. Look, Jones just signed for a monstrous amount, but his cap number is like seven and a half million this year. So you're yeah, better you off signing them long term than keeping them you on have the to cap. Do it just right, though. You have to do it just right. You can't guarantee a lot of money, and you have to leave yourself an out. And I right. don't know if he's going to go for that. I mean, by I, I seriously think Legarius Sneed's earned every dime he's about to make. And whether it's with the Chiefs or not, it doesn't matter. It really doesn't. Let's let's be honest, guys. I know he says he wants to be in Kansas City. Most most people would, right? Like if that's where you've been at your whole career, you're comfortable, you've won two Super Bowls with them, then yeah, that's where you want to be at. But when the rubber hits the road, Mike, this is his first contract outside of his rookie contract. This is where he will make the bulk of his money in his career. Right? Is he really? Is he really going to risk that? This is a question I want to ask because you. he loves Kansas City so much. Right? I don't know. Is Legarius Sneed, he's asking for supposedly $22, 23000000 million. Do you know the highest contract ever signed by a corner was Jair Alexander in 2022, and he only got $21 million annually? Sneed's trying to become the highest paid corner to ever play the game of football right now by over a million dollars per have you, year. Have you noticed the trend? The trend is Chiefs draft player. Uh, Chiefs player developed wins, player. Chiefs developed player. The player wins Super Bowls with Chiefs, then wants to be the top played player at their position in NFL history. Right. Like it's not, it's happened with Tyreek Hill, it's happened with Chris Jones, and now it's Legarius Sneed. Yeah, it happened it, with it, Mahomes. It, right. Wasn't Mahomes at some point the highest paid? He is right now. So, okay, so this is just the way it goes. And this is the old adage, you cannot sign every player. You just can't do it. It's not the way the league's structured. The league sets up salary cap. They set up cap restriction. They set up all this stuff to keep some form of parity in the league. If you want to strike all this down, you're going to have the case of baseball. And look at baseball. Most of us are Royals fans, and the Royals can't keep up. You can't even start to tread water because you got I things like boy, the Dodgers and the right. Yankees and everybody buying up everybody. So you just can't do it. And don't tell me if that's what it happened now that you're going to get those L.A. teams and those New York teams buying everything up. Right. The salary cap is our friend as Chiefs fans. Right. As much as it seems like we're fighting it all the time, that's the only thing that keeps a level playing field. Because like yeah. Mike just said in baseball, and the, our boy Chris Wright, uh, he said the other night in a live stream, the Royals are a glorified farm team. We're getting guys in here and building them up to go on and get paid big money by by teams that can afford more. I mean, we're talking Bobby Witt Jr. just signed the largest contract in, in Royals history, and they don't even touch half of the roster on the Dodgers right now. Yeah, it's pretty crazy, man. So you don't want the NFL to end up in the MLB type thing where it's like there is no salary cap, but guess what? If you're a Midwest team, you're never going to win. Right, and so this is what you have to do with. You have to keep drafting talent, building talent, developing talent, and then you're going to have to say goodbye to people every once in a while, right? That's just the way it works, man. Uh, Adam with the two bombs. He said, Steed's knee and that turf not going to mix well. <laughs> that's a that's good a, possibility. That's a good point. Uh, the Titans are building a new stadium now. I wonder if they're going to have turf. Well, here's the thing. We know Steed had a lingering knee injury, but we don't know to what extent. It might not be a thing. It's just something that we've, we've you know observed and people know about. But we don't know the actual medicals and stuff. Like it might not be an issue for the Colts. They could might not even issue. worry about it. Could be bigger. It could be nothing. You know, yeah, it, it could depends. be something that we weren't even told. You know what I mean? Right. Uh, appreciate right. the two bomb, Adam. We got two bomb from Samuel Lofton. He says, "Can they keep and rework his contract trade later?" Oh, rework his contract then trade later. Well, yeah. Once you have him under yeah. contract, you can now trade him. But here's the thing: if Legarius needs, like, look, I'm I want twenty three million per year. So feasibly three years for, I think Snead's probably wanting four years possibly. I think he knows this is his only contract. He's already twenty seven. This yeah, is his big take, money. He's going to have to take as much as many years and as much money as he can right. get. So I think Snead's looking at about four years. I think that's what he's wanting. I think he's wanting twenty three per. So I think he's looking at about four years, ninety two somewhere in that ballpark. Snead's trying to hit that hundred million dollar mark. Probably wouldn't be surprised. Well, here's the thing. Here's the thing. And the Samuel, to answer your question shortly, yeah, you could. But if you sign him for what he wants and you work that contract out, there's going to be no trading him because that means other teams didn't want to pay him that, so they're not going to take on that contract. So mm -hmm. that's going to be really tough to do. You're going to have tons of dead money, all kinds of stuff on that one. Appreciate the two-bomb, though, Samuel. I uh, see Chris Ballard in the Colts. Uh, if there's any Colts fans in the chat, again, 
chime in. We'd love to hear you. ACU crew's not going to bite your head off or anything as long as you're not being crazy. Uh, Chris Ballard's not known to be paying. He is not a guy, a GM. He pretty, yeah, he's known as a cheapie. That throws out tons of, well, he's not so necessarily cheap. He just don't throw out a lot of guaranteed money. That's not his style. And I think that may be what's holding the Colts up right now. Yeah, The Titans well, will do it. You just think the Titans give up, what, 50-some million dollars guaranteed to Calvin Ridley. Isn't, isn't that the whole thing? Like, it's supposed to, supposedly being held up because of the contract? Like, what they're going to have to pay him later? So, I mean, that makes total sense, right? Right. Uh, we got Iron Price with a two-bomb. He says, love you guys. Can I get a suck it? Uh, Iron Price, you can definitely get a suck it. Here you go. Suck it! Suck it! May I do work for you? Suck it! Suck so it! Go. Suck it! Steve, back to the... <laughs> Back to the, let's just stay on this for just a little bit longer because this is what the people are here for, obviously. Uh, we, yeah. we left off on Matt Verderam talking about how it was just too much, his asking price too much. And now we've already covered, they see you want 22, 23, blah, blah, blah. Okay. So then Mike Chappell comes out. He reports NFL stuff too. And he said, the, the luxurious Sneed situation is very wild. At this point, I get the impression nothing is going on. Could change if KC lowers their asking price in a trade and interested team increases what it's willing to part with slash contract. Again, I don't believe they're there. It's a fluid situation. Take it or leave it. So now he thinks that Brett Veach and them has kind of got a little back and forth going. And Veach is like, uh, Tennessee, the Colts have offered me number 80, blah, blah, blah. And then he's like, will you give me number 60? And then they're like, yeah, we'll give you 60. And he goes back and says, hey, they're going to give me 60. You are going to give me a 42? As yeah. long as he don't push it too far, that's ideal for Brett Beach. Right. He's doing what he's got to do. If you're not careful and you push a little bit too far, might get a wrench thrown in the gears and you might have to pay, you know, give right. Snead the tag money. I think that's the, that's the double whammy here. Yeah. Snead's trying to get all he could get, so he's playing both sides of the fence. He's like, "Hey mm -hmm. guys, they're willing to do that. You gonna let a, you letting a divisional rival get a lockdown corner like Snead? You better pick it up. Give me that second round pick, right? But you've right. also got Snead playing hardball, saying I want twenty three million per year. So now Ballard's getting it from all fronts. Uh, Ron Carthen's getting it from all fronts. The Titans and the Colts are just getting it, and they're getting hammered by their fan bases too." The fan bases are kind of wanting Snead. They don't want the other team to have it. They're rivals. That's like us in a in a shootout with Denver. Of course, we ain't wanting to give them anything. So right. you had that going. So then Stephen Holder comes out this morning again. Well, this was, wasn't was this morning. It was just a little while ago. I want to say seven, eight hours. He says, once and for all, there is no trade in place between the Chiefs and Colts for Snead. I was told this unequivocally from the highest levels of the Colts organization. That's a term for, I don't really have a source. Um, I'm just going to say something really big. Uh, otherwise, yeah, he said Ballard. Well, apparently, or... <laughs> if you read up on old Stephen Holder, Colts fans hate him. They say he's full of crap. He reports and bad that, info a lot. Yeah, they say that pretty much if he's saying something, it's usually the opposite. So there's probably a plan in place. That's what we're getting. Yeah, yeah. Well, okay, so just to round this out and, and just to shut down the rumor mill until the last few things we've got, our old friend Chris Lamonts, old Lockdown Lamonts, who, by the way, he goes by lockdown, Steve, and uh, Lemon, he's played 160-some snaps in the NFL, and he has a 50 cover grade. Uh, that's a bold choice, Cotton, to call yourself <laughs> lockdown. Uh, but he does play for the Colts right now. He gives uh -huh. the Sne Sneed the eyeballs. And so what does Sneed do? He eyeballs them back. And guess what? Twitter <laughs> goes ape. Eyeballs and eyeballs and eyeballs and eyeballs. And everybody's, look, Sneed, he looks at him. He looks back at me. <laughs> he looks at me. He looks back at him. And he looks at me. <laughs> That's what's happening, bro. Like we just we just have a lot of looking at each other right now. It's insanity. <laughs> just eyeballs is caused Twitter to go in a full meltdown. But this is where we're at. So basically, at the end of the song, at the end of the drawn out drama, at the end of a long day of of misinformation, Steve, we still don't have the Sneed's still in a Chiefs uniform as of right now. And by the way, he was right. somewhere eating barbecue tonight. I think probably he's probably over trying to sell some sandwiches at. Uh... Zarda. He has that old, he I does, can't remember what it's called. He's doing a Raising Cane's now. He's, he's selling chicken strips out here. Oh, chicken Steve, strips. what's your opinion of Raising Cane's? We got 884 people in here, and I'm sure if you guys haven't hit the like button now, hit it. If you haven't subscribed, let's, hit the subscribe please, button. Let's it's, try to get a thousand in here. Let's, let's try, try to, to break the thousand. And by the way, so, Steve's going to tell you right now where he like breaks. Button. 
raising canes on his chicken strip uh, level. Mike, what are you trying to do? Are you trying to talk about roast beef sandwiches instead of Chiefs football? You're going to look like six, eight, ten, six, ten sports, whatever they're called. Carrington, Carrington Hart, Hardesty. What's his name? Carlington, Carlington Hardy. Hardy. <laughs> Carl, Carlton Carl Handsome Davis. Okay, yeah. Um, okay, so raising canes just quickly. <laughs> you went back to it. You got Zaxby's. You put Canes. Zaxby's over Chick Fil A. I think Canes is a little bit above Zaxby's, like maybe even. Whoa. Yep. Well, you can't just call the chicken strip. Like you can't just say sauce is excluded. You take that cane sauce out though. That's just a plain old breaded chicken. Well, Zaxby sauce is decent too, but I still think I'm going to take it. I'm going to tell you something. Zaxby's. It ain't no Southern cooking. That's for sure. There I haven't no tried, seasonings I, in it. I haven't tried Slim Chickens yet, so I, I can't rightfully rank them. Um, we'll, we'll just go ahead and we'll stop at that. Sni- I, I think I got them. Up, I got them above Zaxby's. Okay. Uh, Kevin Taylor. We don't know who Kevin Taylor is. Kevin, in- introduce yourself. Who is this a breaking? Are you the man behind pretty Ricky? By the way, we forgot <laughs> pretty Ricky, the guy that's nailed every single thing in free agency that just come on the scene on X blowing X up. I think it's a Roger Goodell burner. It's somebody that has some inside. I think info. it's Brian Parrott. So yeah, we, we have inside info. It could be Brian Parrott. Parrott. Yeah. But I will say, he got shut down today. Pretty Ricky is op- he's been wiped out. Ian Rappaport, Adam Schefter, somebody's done sent out a hit guy against him. I think that's why we haven't seen Brian Parrott in the chat yet because he's having flashbacks of when he got banned from How About Those Chiefs. He got right. banned from Twitter, and he just can't he can't do True. it. True, uh, but Kevin says uh, Snead's wanting one hundred mil. I think I think he's going to try to get there if he can. I think he's somewhere around it. I really do. Uh, we got a 10 bomb from Ron, our boy Ron. Let's go, baby. Dude, love Ron. Ron in the 10 bomb, Ron in the memberships. Ron does everything so for us. Appreciate you, Ron. You're the man. He says, do you guys think Snead is trying to sabotage a trade so he could stay in KC? What if he stays and doesn't have a good year? His price will go down. I say go for 20 and call it a day. I think you start like Chris Jones. You have to start at the big asking price because the team's going to just jaw you all the way down, right? They're going to say, oh, 14. And then they're going to meet somewhere at about 18, 19, 20. Steve, Jalen Johnson got hit for 17, right? And everybody said, well, that means Sneed can't get to 17. And I said, he's a little more. Yeah, I said, what are you talking about? Yeah, like, he's stupid. better than Jalen Johnson. He should get more. Right. People have lost their minds, Steve. But yeah. what do you think, Ron? You think Ron's onto something? Sneed tried to sabotage it so he can win a third ring? I'll have to no, go. Wait, three with... in a row. He's already won three rings, right? No, I don't think he was around for the first one. Was he not on the team in the first year? No, that was Tervarius Ward. Oh, Mooney. I think. Man, it's been, a, it's been a while, baby. It's but that's been what a I while. think. We're old, dude. I'm telling you, like, I forget just, what happens three days ago. I think it's just two for Sneed. Uh, but appreciate the 10, Ron. And my feeling is that no, I don't think you can play that game when you're talking about this is literally the big money this guy's going to make with his career. So I think Sneed's probably focused on getting the best deal he can get, regardless of who it's from. I think Snead's got to make the money that he's going to use for the rest of his life and his family going forward and generations ahead of him are going to have. So I think it's a big decision. And I don't think you can let, like, man, I'd like to stick around for one more year uh, just to try to, you know, win another championship. I don't I don't think that's going to come into play that much for him. Maybe if it was an older guy uh, at the end of his career that's already made his money, then yes. But I don't think Snead can afford to play that game. I, I do firmly believe Snead maybe wants to stay in KC. Well, yeah, I, I guarantee he would love it. If Kansas City could match whatever and he could stay in KC, he would pick KC over anybody. I, I firmly believe that. But K- if Kansas City can't match it, he's got to go take it. I mean, that's all there is to I it. I don't think there's any doubt that Kansas City's not going to match anything. I, I just think they're going to say no. That. They can't. They're, yeah, they're not going to. Mike, real um, quick. 887 people. Let's try to get this over a thousand threshold. So if you haven't hit the like button yet, take a couple seconds and go hit the like button for us and help get this out to more people and uh, see if we can pump that number up, baby. See if we can pump up the jams. Pump up the jam. If we can pump it up, I'll tell you, I'd probably sing another song (laughs) for you guys or something. I've already, I've already got, you know, one working about looking at each other. Mike, pump up the jam made me think of like, whoop, there it is. And then my mind totally went to the 90s and to like the Mighty Ducks and American Flags and the USA Jam. USA, USA. Speaking of USA, Steve, Flapjack with two. He says, Mr. Deeds, crazy eye, Jif. Yeah. (laughs) Mr. Deeds. 
He talked about Steve Buscemi. Yeah. Yeah. Steve Buscemi. Boy, that was a good movie, right? Mr. Deeds was a pretty solid one that kind of gets overlooked in the I, Adam Sandler Jeremiah would like to world. hear a little careless whisper. <sighs> Appreciate you, the two, Flapjack. I don't even remember careless whisper. What is that yeah, like? you, I'm never gonna... I can't remember it either. Hold I'm on. never gonna dance again. Yeah, there you go. That's it's what we're gonna... As, Hey, that's what we're going to do if Sneed leaves. If Sneed, the day Sneed signs with somebody else, here it goes. Do, 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 do. Yeah, you got to have that little. Dance again. Without Sneed playing, we can't win, baby. I can't do it. I can't do it. I, I'm probably running people off. I, we've we've went down 40 people. Since Mike, you ruined it. We were trying to get over 1,000, and you're, you're running them away. They're, they're leaving in droves right now, baby. Uh, <laughs> nobody wants to have no fun out here. Everybody's a stick in the mud on a Saturday night at 1042 p.m. But if you're with us, you're one of the real ones. Hit that like button. Hit that subscribe button, baby. Steve, we're almost to 26K. Did you think when we started it, two fools, <laughs> two fools out here talking about Chiefs football was going to pump up to 26K in two years? What? What's that even mean? <laughs> Is this real world? Is this real life? I guess so, man. You remember cool. David We're at gonna... the dentist when he'd say, "Yeah, is this real life?" Ah, that's, yeah, that's yeah. me. No, for real though. We're we're gonna keep growing this baby though. Keep doing some content. Keep uh, growing the ACU crew. Appreciate you guys though, for real. But uh, Mike, Legarius Sneed, oh. what is? Let's 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 do this. Let's play a game since we know all the possible scenarios that are going on behind our backs. We, we we're not for sure. You know, everybody's being sneaky. Everybody's sneaking around sneaky, right now. Sneaky, sneaky. Um, being a bunch of Jezebels out there. Oh, okay, yeah. so what do you think? If you could put a percentage, with 100 being the total, right? Yeah. What percentage would you give? Sneed, chase, Sneed stays with Chiefs. Sneed goes to Colts. Sneed goes to Titans. And then, uh, right. and, and just for and just to, for good measure, other. Like, is there another possible thing out there? Right. Um, I'm going to put it all at about 25%. And you didn't mention a fourth, but there is a fourth. I'm going to say 25% on the Colts, uh, Titans. I'm going to say 25% that we get stuck with them because the asking price is just too high. I'm going to put 25% on a dark horse that we don't even know about because there's always somebody. Do you remember the other day when the Ridley sweepstakes were going down and it was – Patriots versus Jaguars. Who where's he gonna go? And then at the eleventh hour, here comes the Dagon Titans throwing him four hundred right. million dollars in the bankroll, and then he puts on a Titans jersey. So you've always got that random team. You may get somebody. There's some dude. Look, the Steelers they've been trading everybody. They trading quarterback. It's a QB carousel this offseason. Maybe they want to get in on the Q, the corner sweepstakes. Maybe they want to just throw a who needs draft picks. When you got a uh, the the dynamic duo of Justin Fields and and uh, Russell Wilson out there, Mike, that says ten seventy nines in here right now. Let's go. Give a little round of applause to everybody for hitting Let's that go. like button, baby. Let's go. Let's go. Uh, golf clap. So yeah, if you're if you're new to the channel, hit the hit the subscribe button. We do a ton of Chiefs content. Uh, we do a lot of live streams. We try to make you know videos, video podcasts. All kinds of stuff. So hit that sub button if you haven't already. Hang out with us more often. And don't be afraid to get in the chat. ACU crew is awesome. And, uh, yeah, don't do it. Mike, I, I just had to point this out real quick before we get back to the business. Oh my God. Amy says, Mike, I need a song before the live ends tonight to cheer me up because I had my brother's memorial service today. I had a very long day. Amy, that is one of the worst, um, the worst comments I've ever had to read on here, I think. That's, that's pretty sucky. I, yeah, I'm sorry you had a bad day. And, and I, this is why we do this and act stupid to just, you know, people can kind of forget about what's going on and, and focus on football and something stupid and just look at us. I'll give you a song. I'll give I don't know what, what I'll, I'll have to, I'll take a request, I guess. You can request <laughs> one out for me. I don't she know, but I hate to hear that, man. That's a, yeah. Not, I don't want to read that. But yeah, you know so what? Bittersweet, bittersweet. It. In a better place, you know? Sometimes you just gotta look at it from that angle. Maybe you should just sing a song about how cool Amy is. Just make it up, freestyle it. I might have to freestyle one later. I'll do a little right. writing. Better keep it in mind. Don't for, don't forget Amy's song. Steve, do a poll. Throw a poll up for our people. Ask them the question you just a asked. Poll me. for the people. Poll for the people. 
Colts, Titans, or Chiefs? Where do we think he ends up or other? Put a three. Put a three. And by the way, don't just vote four? Chiefs to be a Chiefs homer. Let's use the noggin a little bit. Take your feelings out of it and just tell us what you think is going to happen, not where you want him to be. Because we all want him to have a Chiefs jersey on, right, Steve? Right. But not where you but want it, him but, to be, where you think he may end up. Like, here's the thing. I want him in a Chiefs jersey, but I don't want him in there if it's detrimental to the plan going forward. Because we have a lot more Lombardis to win. We have Patrick Mahomes in his prime. We we can't, you know, we don't need a wrench right. in the gear. So, I mean, if it's going to be at, at a cost, right? I'm scared of it. KC Chiefs, K Chiefs 12 says, is Detroit a serious trade partner? Oh, uh, yeah. I think they could be. They're not giving up pick number one. They're not giving up that first pick number 29. It's not doing it. Uh, so I don't know. Yeah, I don't know either, man. But they do need some corner help. I'm pretty sure. I don't think they picked up anybody. in the. Let me go look at see what they've done in the offseason. Lions free agency tracker. Let's go check no, that they, out. Uh, they extended the GM and the coach, I think. Yeah, Dan they, Campbell. Like, hey, we actually won a playoff game for the first time in forever. Just pay everybody. Extend them. Okay, here's what they've done. Got all horned up, bro. The Lions got a little horned up over DJ <laughs> Reader and paid him a two-year deal. They got DJ Reader in the middle. They That's signed good. Graham That's Glasgow, good. guard, three years, 20 mil. They have signed Donovan Peoples-Jones. He returns to Detroit. Peoples-Jones returns on a one-year deal. They've – Zonovan Knight – out of NC State. Who remembers Zonovan Knight, by the way? Not Donovan. Zon- Not Donovan. Zonovan with a Z. They signed defensive end Marcus Davenport. <laughs> um, he was a big name a few years ago. Kind of went up to Minnesota and had some lackluster season. Uh, it, yeah. Uh, they got Amick Robertson from the Vegas Raiders. He's about two foot tall, but they did sign him. So are they still in the market? Possibly. Uh, they signed Khalil Dorsey, another corner they're not in the ballpark of Sneed, okay? So, yeah. yeah. And they signed, just like the Chiefs, their best deal of the year, Scott Daly, long snapper, trying to compete with our James Winchester signing. By the way, you're not going to compete with Jamison Winchester. No, he's the greatest of all time. The greatest. The greatest. Who's better than Winchester? Nobody. And if you say Lions long snapper Scott Daly, I'll say nay, nay. Nay, nay. Anetta says, what would Snead look like on the Lions? Darius Slay. <laughs> like early Darius Slay, where he was locking things down at the Lions. Uh, Snead's going to be a beast wherever he goes. He's just a baller. Like, I, I truly believe that. I think that Snead is – I think he's that guy. Like, I think he he is the guy that's going to keep getting better, and, and he's always going to give it his all. He's not going to take a payday and disappear. So I think whoever does pay for Snead's going to get what get their money's worth. I do. Yeah, I agree. I don't think. Uh, hey, I don't Duncan. think you could put Snead on any roster and it'd be bad. Duncan, you ain't got to go, man. You ain't got to go, Duncan. Duncan, what are you crying about? He's just he's. We must have hurt his little butt. He's about butt what? Hurt. I don't know. Hey, someone, one of the mods, do us a favor. Put Duncan in the pit. I the think suit, Duncan might be to the pit trolling. of misery. I think Duncan might be trolling. Duncan's been here a long time. He don't usually act. Like, he's not usually like a little. Little whiny baby. He he, well, he don't act like Jamar Chase. He is now. If one of our mods could put him in the pit of misery, I'm all for it. <laughs> to the pit. To the pit. Man. Uh let's look at the poll real quick. I'm sure people's been voting. Let's go take it take a look. We got 132 votes so far. Keep on voting in that poll if you haven't already. I want to see what you guys have to say. Right now, Mike, 45% are saying the cheese. They don't think they're gonna get a deal done. I would be I would be Interested to know if they think it's going to be the Chiefs because the Chiefs want to pay him or want uh-huh. him to be here that bad, or the Chiefs just won't be able to get a deal done and they're going to end up getting stuck with him on the on the tag. Right. So that that could be the next poll. <laughs> yeah, dude, you pull get it up. polls polls for days. Speaking Ryan of polls, Paul. Ryan polls maybe maybe <laughs> he'll uh try to make a trade for him. Mike, we got a five bomb from Iron Price. Says Townsend couldn't hold the ball. Winchester for life. Uh, you know, a lot. It's so funny because we went in extreme different directions. Because back when Dustin Colquitt chimed in and said, "Hey, I'm old and irrelevant now, but I want to still get the spotlight for just a second. 
He tried to say that when Harrison Butker's ankle was messed up and he had to change the way he kicked, it was all Tommy Townsend's fault that he was missing kicks because he couldn't hold the ball. So what, what happened? All of Chiefs Kingdom started parroting it, even though we're like, Townsend's fine. You guys are stupid. Um, but everyone kept parroting it. But then yeah. when Townsend leaves and, and you're like, well, we have Matt Ariza, so it's not, uh, we love Townsend, don't get us wrong, but we still got a, a very viable option at punter. We're, we're fine. They're like, well, I'm just afraid that we won't have anybody to hold the ball like Townsend could. And it's like, are you freaking kidding me? Like right. literally a year and a half ago, you were crying about it. And now that's why you don't want him gone. Yeah, that's crazy. But Winchester for life. Thanks for the five bomb iron price. And we got a two bomb from our boy Jared says, can we get some ketchup in the chat for Amy? Guys, put some damn ketchup in the chat for Amy. Let's cheer up Amy. Some freaking Amy, Amy had a bad day. Let's make her have a better night. For sure. Um, I've seen somebody ask who's got draft compensation for Sneed. I seen Gil give a freaking 10 bomb. Let's go. Gil with a Gil? 10 bomb. Let's go. I, Mike, I still need my banner. Gil didn't send you two banners. I haven't seen you, though. You have. Once. But it's not Mike. like I'm actively trying to hold out on you. Gil, Mike's trying to hold out on me. I just thought I'd let <laughs> you know. <laughs> he's got one right behind him, and he's got another one hung up somewhere else. Don't yeah, let him fool you. Actually. Uh, <laughs> so, so, everybody, Ketchup's legendaries in the chat for Gil, everybody else that's donated. And Amy. But Steve, who has draft compensation to give up for Sneed? Well, so I go look, and you know who's got a lot of draft compensation, by the way? The New Orleans Saints. But you want to know what their deal is? They don't have nothing in the third or fourth round. They've got five, four round five picks. Would you give up Snead for four round five picks? No. That's kind of too weird, right? It's too weird, but would you do it? Just four <laughs> round five picks. Probably not. I would need a higher pick. But could you take those four round fives and start like just playing ball in the first round, second round, third round? Four. You maybe could take one of those and move up seemingly in round two, round three, round four. Well, can I say this? Like this, that this will kind of go crazy. to the, the. Since you're talking about the Saints, I was actually going to use Marshawn Lattimore as kind of a guideline for what we're dealing with with Snead because the Saints were supposedly wanting to move on from Lattimore, but they're getting such poor returns and trade offers that they're probably not going to now. They're just going to keep them. So that right. just shows you what the cornerback market's like. Well, but to your point, Mike, yeah, they have a lot of draft capital. Would they be willing? Would they be wanting to trade for Snead? Probably no, not. But they can't I mean, afford you, anything. I don't even know if they can afford a bag of chips at this point. Right. I'm just but looking for could, teams that has. What kind picks. of tandem would that be? Yeah, that'd be pretty nasty. And then they have the Honey Badger back there at safety. That that'd be that'd be tough, bro. Dude, you know a team that I thought would be in on it. And uh, it makes a lot of sense. And it's so weird that we've not heard anything. And, and before I even name the name, because I know everybody will they'll cry and whine about it, about something. <laughs> so let me go look. Um, I want to make sure. I want to see what all the info I can find. Let me make sure they can afford them. Okay. They may be able to afford them. They may not. Okay. $15 million in cap space. They just released every freaking corner on the roster just about. You got a Chiefs guy as their head coach, and they're in the same division as the Colts and the Titans. Why the is Jaguars. it the Jaguars trying to come grab Snee? Because they're looking for that bump and run physical corner. It's kind of odd. And they just lost Ridley, so you saved a little money there. That's kind of odd that they've not picked up the phone and talked with Andy Reid because the whole Doug Peterson aspect, and they were wanting to do that. And so if I go back and look at what the Jaguars have to offer, they have number 17. So what that tells me, would you be willing to trade Legereus Sneed and flip first-round picks? Would that be enough for you to go from 32 to 17 and pick up a tackle and just give them Sneed to boot? Hmm. I'd like to get another pick with it. Okay, uh, let's give uh, like I mean, even if it's something cheap, like a fifth round, rounder. They got two I mean, round fours, so maybe a round five. Give me a fourth and a pick swap. Well, you got to think about it. Go from number thirty-two to number seventeen. That's a lot of. That's a it lot is. to move. It is, but I, I think you gouge them for the fourth. Can't get it, you take the five. 
okay. It, but I think I like that idea, right? It lets the Jaguars essentially right. get Legereus Sneed and still pick in the first round, even though they lose a lot of spots. But that also frees up a lot of money from us and gets us in the right. middle of the first. And now you can maybe take a Talise Fuanga. You can maybe take a, a Troy Fatano. Fatano. What a bunch of names here. J.C. Latham, not good enough to play left tackle, in my opinion. He's a right tackle kind of guy. Man, so I actually said something about, like, when Tyron Smith signed with the Jets, uh, I posted it on Twitter, and I was like, you know, this makes me think, like, what what do you think the Chiefs are planning on doing at left tackle? Do you think they're looking at draft? What? Mike, that's the scenario I gave you gave you two last week and you crapped on it. What Did was I? it? What scenario? I don't remember that. I would have crapped on it. I don't know if I crapped on it. What'd you crap on, bro? The Jaguars what you, thing? What are you pooping on? I don't I know. I don't remember the ja- I don't remember. If anyway, I did, yeah, sorry. <laughs> before I was rudely interrupted, uh, I asked uh, Chiefs Twitter, which is a, a finicky group of weirdos, by the way. But I asked them, like, what do you think the Chiefs are planning on doing at left tackle? Are they drafting for left tackle? Are they, is there some someone out there they haven't signed yet? Or are they just going to sign back Donovan Smith? Right. Uh, are they sold on Wanye? Like, is it where are we at here? Like, what do what do you think the Chiefs are doing? And you know, they overwhelmingly said that the Chiefs are sold on Wanye Morris, and he will be the starting left tackle. What do you think? I think that they're happy with Wanye and how he played when he had his shot last year. Do I think that you're just completely sold on him coming in and just starting all the games at left tackle? I can't get there. I think you have to have somebody there to compete I think he, with. Him. I think he proved that he can get there, maybe, but I don't know if you trust it right now. Same, same. I, but I think you got to have somebody. And honestly, right. look, Wanye was what a third round pick. Yes, I think he was a third. Yeah. If you could get a first round quality tackle, and he beats, I mean, if Wanye beats him out, cool. You just suck at drafted. But if he beats out Wanye and Wanye just turns into a utility guy, a guy that can maybe play the right guard, you you know, maybe you got something there. But I think you always got to keep upgrading. Iron Price with the two bumps, Steve. He says, give me Mike Dana or give me death. Suck it. I'm all for re-signing Mike Dana if you can get him for a decent price. Uh, SpotRec had his um, value, his market value at $15 which is the same they had as Hollywood Brown. So keep that in mind. Do you think they got Mike Dan and Hollywood Brown's values accidentally crossed? Well, they were both at fifteen million. Oh, okay. I thought. Okay, that's right. So yeah, yeah I guess potentially they could have. <laughs> they got but no, that's that was my point though. Like especially after the Calvin Ridley signing, we really didn't think the Chiefs were going to be able to get Marquise Brown for as cheap as they got him. Like that was literally Brett Veach performing dark arts on a contract because they overpaid Calvin Ridley that much. And and the market value for, for Hollywood was 15 million a year. We got them for 7 million in incentives. That's insane. Like what a freaking deal. But does that also make you think that maybe spot rack don't spot rack don't have their uh, finger on the pulse as much as you think they do. Maybe Mike Dana was severely overshot there at 15 million a year. Like, could we still get him for a lot cheaper? I think he's more like, in my opinion, he's more around a five to $7 million guy. He hasn't got from what I'm reading. He hasn't got a lot of interest. So maybe they let him test the market and then maybe he comes back and signs a one year deal. Kind of like everybody else. Does it yeah. help him though to sign a one year prove it deal? I mean, well, he, think about he has it. has nothing to prove to us. We all know Mike Dan is good. Right, but even to everybody else, it's like where the guy was drafted and what he's been able to do in four years, like why do you have to prove at this point? Like you right. prove that you're a solid player. Right. Like, no, he's not a number one get-after-the-quarterback edge rusher. He's a serviceable number two guy. He's a guy that can give you lots of rotation snaps. He kind of reminds me. And I was doing some uh, defensive end work today on my uh, top 150, all my draft rankings. And he kind of reminds me, I seen a player that kind of reminded me of Mike Dana. And it was, 
I think it was Marsh. No, it was Adisa Isaac from Penn State. He kind of reminded me from him. And it wasn't because of the way they were or anything like that. That It wasn't because of their body type or anything. Like, it wasn't that. It was just the fact when I was watching Adisa Isaac. I think it was Adisa Isaac. I don't know. But anyways, it wasn't the fact that it was his body type, but it was the fact that he just was a serviceable guy that you know is going to sit there and give you good snaps. Does that make sense? Like he's not going to – like when he's and in the it, game, it's going to be fine. You're not like going to notice. So low floor player. I think that's what Mike Dana is. Right. Like that's what I'm trying to his say. His ceiling so like, might not be super high, but he's got a low floor. Like you know what you got with him. He's going to be good. He's going to be solid. Right. I'm almost positive it was Adisa Isaac out of Penn State. Right. It was either him yeah. or Braswell it's out okay. of Alabama, but I think it was Isaac. Appreciate the two, Iron Price. And we got a 10 bomb from Black Kraken. Black, black Kraken. Kraken. I like to say his name as if I'm Irish. A Black Kraken. It just rolls black off the tongue, Kraken. weirdly. Black Kraken. I want to say it like uh, Dave Chappelle. Black Kraken. Black Kraken. All right, Mike, read the comment. After don't don't tell me to read as if you could have been reading the comment. I just wanted you. After Steve Trey, I was going to see which one of us said Black Kraken long enough. Like who I would have went for a while. <laughs> who caved first and read the comment? Right after Steve Trade, get Mike Williams. By the way, Nick Wright had a graph showing. <laughs> Nick Wright had a graph. He popped out a freaking graph that showing HW has more career reception yards. And TDs, then Samuel, Mooney, and Davis. So all the haters know what they can kiss. Hollywood, Hollywood. Brown. Hollywood Brown was the better signing if you think about it. He's not oh, has, yeah, especially for the money. Right. Look, okay, look, Davis out of all these guys had the best QB, right? Hands down. Josh Allen was the best one. Mooney hasn't had a great QB. Samuel's not had a great QB QB. And neither's Hollywood. Like, even when even when Kyler Murray's healthy, I just don't think Kyler Murray is worth a crap. Okay. So, geez, there's quarterbacks right now. I would rather have JJ McCarthy running my franchise. <laughs> I think he'll be solid, honestly. And I'm not even um, joking about that. If you tell you me think- today you could have JJ McCarthy for the next 10 years or you could have uh, Kyler Murray, I'd be hard pressed to take Kyler Murray. So I think if you trade Snead off and get some draft capital, it does open up a possibility of the Chiefs doing something else like that. Like getting another small signing. Uh, even if you can't do like Mike Williams on a prove-it deal or something like that, maybe you could talk Hunter Renfro into coming in for cheap. I mean, he's an excellent route runner. I mean, we all know that. We had to watch it for years. So, right. I mean, I, maybe I just, there's another move they could make if – they were to be able to trade Snead off, but paying Snead twenty million a year, I don't think we're done. Steve, hear me out. I don't yeah. think we can make another move like a Mike Williams on a prove it deal. Probably, and I'm going to tell you why. We don't have enough wide receiver slots available well, because we are going to pick one in the draft, right? And this is such a deep draft. You may be able to grab two. You know, I was thinking about this earlier. I was thinking about this earlier. Like, we're so quick to forget that Kadarius Tony, if his head was on straight, is freaking fast and freakishly athletic. We're so quick to forget that Sky Moore, because he hasn't produced yet, we, we forget that he's a freak athlete as well. Like, ridiculous speed. And then we're talking Hollywood Brown, we're talking Rasheed Rice, we're talking Travis Kelsey. We're not even talking about any other additions. Or Justin Ross. Like, all these guys have this ridiculously high ceiling, and yeah, they're not where they should be. But could you imagine if one or two of those started clicking and figured it out? you got to ask yourself, though, if the Chiefs were to put Mike Williams in on a prove-it deal, if you're a Justin Ross fan, you need to be very concerned because he's probably out. Who do you think the first one's out on that list? You think it's Justin Ross or Kadarius Toney? Or, or honestly, I think it's probably... And and I, okay, I'm going to say this at the at the risk of sounding like an idiot because we all know how they are with this guy, but also Justin Watson. Well, you, we have three, so right now there's three that's guaranteed, and I think four receivers are guaranteed to be back next year. Hollywood, Who you got Who you Rasheed got? Rice. Mm-hmm. You have. I don't think Sky Moore's going anywhere no. on that rookie contract. Too high of a draft pick on the no, he's still there. And I honestly think the guy we take in the draft, who it may be, 
is number four. Would it so surprise you if two the Chiefs more spots. don't? Would it surprise you if the Chiefs don't take someone in the draft? Or, or would it surprise you if they waited till? It doesn't late? matter who they take. He will make the team. Unless it's a Cornell Powell situation. But they're going to yeah. take one of the first two rounds. So he's on the team, and that makes four. So that gives you Kadarius Tony, Justin Ross, and Justin Watson. And this is before you seemingly want to go out and grab a Mike Williams or a. I think I think Nico might still be in the mix. Nico's here. got a shot, so they're yeah. not taking seven again. No, no. So I who are we starting to cut at this point? I don't see them doing it. Um, appreciate the ten bomb though, Black Kraken. Appreciate it. Absolutely. It's a good talking. Like it's it's fun to analyze. Cash Gaby here says Colts fan. Colts fan here. How good is Snead? Is he worth a four year, sixty to eighty million deal? I hey, appreciate you being here, brother. Um, appreciate it. Uh, 60, 80 million is a steal. I think if you can get Steve for 20 million a year, you're good. And if you hit yeah, that 60 million 60, mark, you're really good. Uh, and how good is Snead? He was the best corner in football last year by a lot. Look, he plays solid, solid man coverage. You can put him on an island. He's going to beat people to death if you don't believe it. Look, go back dude, and watch the film against Justin Jefferson. Go back and watch the film of any game in the playoffs. He was a straight menace in the playoffs. Right. Go he watch the Tyreek Hill film. He dude, beat insane. the crap out of Tyreek Hill. Uh, yeah. He's very good. Is he worth $23 million per year? Now you're starting to get a little weird. Like, getting up close to that $100 million mark. Is a corner worth $23 yeah, million a year? Yeah, that's my point. It's not because that I, I'll tell you this. If a corner is worth $23 million a year to you, then by all means, get Legarius Sneed. He's the best one out there. Exactly. That's the way I see it. But yeah. no, I think he he would do a really good job. And you guys just signed back Kenny Moore to play the slot. I think you got him for what yeah. three years, ten million per. Pretty good yeah. with Kenny Moore there, and you got locked down Lamonds. I don't know how in the world this guy's not starting for you, <laughs> Mike. Who's who's pretty Ricky? I don't even know who that is. I don't know what you're talking about, Ozark Hillbilly. I don't think it's well. It could be Steve. Who? Who are we talking about? I don't even know what that is. I don't know. Ugly Roger. <laughs> Steve has a burger on there. I don't remember what it's called, but he's got one. Do I? <laughs> RP Anderson says two bomb. Trade Steed, extend Bolton, and Creed and Smith. I think Smith's a goner, bro. If you I saw think, them guard, yeah. yeah, guards were getting paid, paid. So if that continues, Steve, do you think a lot of people are saying Nick Bolton's not worth it? But we That's just now thing. learned. We just now learned that. Spags has so much trust in Nick Bolton. He thinks Nick, Nick Bolton ain't going nowhere, makes baby. Him go. I think Bolton is probably the number one priority. You ain't pulling your, you ain't pulling your green year. dot off of there, and I just don't see it. I think there's too much trust there. I think Nick Bolton's a guy that could be around for the long haul, much like Derek Johnson. Dude, but Creed and Trey Smith are going to make bank. Yeah, I think they you're are. going to have to pick one. I would. I mean, honestly. I love those two guys, by the way. There's not a player on the Chiefs I – well, I take that back. Nicole Hardman. But uh, there's not a player on the Chiefs I don't love. Steve, why do you hate McCole so much? I don't hate him. I just I, – like, I was tired of the experiment, and I thought we were done with it, and they, they're like, nay, nay. Look, Steve, we're going to do it again. We're going to give up another McCullough. draft pick. We're going to give up another draft pick for him. Uh, no, but anyway, I love Creed and Trey Smith both, but do you think it's out of the realm of possibility that the Chiefs would move on from both and replace them via the draft? It's kind of weird, but I feel like that every be, year. That's very, just, very risky, though, because, I mean, the interior offensive line for the Chiefs has been absolutely the best in the league the last few years. It seems like a crazy take. But at the yeah, same time, Brent is out of the realm of wilder stuff. That, that was my thing. I don't think it's smart, necessarily, or anything like that, but do you think it's out of the realm of possibility? What because if, there's a lot of money going to be in between those two. What if you, like you said, you're thinking a year, two years ahead, what if this year, the second round, third round, maybe we get something for Snead? What if you use that on a nice guard slash center, such as like a Graham Barton out of Duke, a Jackson Powers Johnson out of Oregon if he was to slip into the mid-second? Why does Jackson Powers Johnson sound like a car lot? It does. But J JPJ, what if you was to grab one of those guys? Maybe a Christian Mahogany. Steve, Christian Mahogany? Mahogany? This you, is the first mention, time that I get to play mahogany? my clip. Mahogany. Uh, I have many leather-bound books, and my apartment smells of rich mahogany. <laughs> rich mahogany. 
Mahogany. But here's the thing. If you want to be able to get some draft capital and take one of these guys, because they're just straight maulers on the inside. Hey, hey, I appreciate the two. That helps. RP Anderson. That maybe alleviates the blow here over the next few years. So, yeah, I don't know. It, Brent Veach has got to, at some point, in a way, he's got to stop letting contracts get to the very last year. I think he needs to start doing something maybe a year or two early. Sam Lofton says mahogany brings the wood. Yeah, he does. Is he in the right industry? Is he playing football or? Yeah, he does. Bringing the wood. Mahogany wood. Mahogany's from Boston College, by the way. We know how Boston College throws out those offensive linemen. Is there anybody better at throwing out offensive linemen than Boston College and Wisconsin? Wisconsin is one of those teams. Name a better one. What's an offensive lineman you? I don't think there's no, no better. I don't think there's no better. I don't I don't have that information stored in my head. Like which college put out the most offensive linemen that were successful in the NFL? Come on. Spot a team off for me. Ohio State. Possibly. All right, let's move on. Oklahoma. TJ Harris is Oklahoma. That's a good one. Oklahoma's a pretty good one. Yeah. Steve, Kevin Beek says go after Tyler Boyd, question mark. I don't like it. I'm out. I don't like Tyler hey, Boyd. And for I think me? He's 30. I'm out. Yeah. It's going to be a no from me. D- does he feel like somebody I could see the Chiefs trying to take a stab at? Probably. Maybe. But, but. You know, he, w- he would serve a purpose. Hey, have a good night, Richie. Um, he would serve a purpose for the Chiefs for sure. And I mean, if they got him on like a one-year deal, I mean, I know he's 30 years old, but if they got him on a one-year deal and he was solid, I mean, after last year's uh, wide receiver room, you can't be mad about pretty much anything they do. But uh, I'm just not a fan of Boyd. I wouldn't be like super excited about it. Let's put it that way. But I wouldn't be mad either. That's, yeah, that's for a, sure. Meh, meh. Kenneth says there's been talk about the Chiefs going to sign J.K. Dobbins. See, we kind of talked about that a little bit. I was like, hey, would you – remember, I brought that up before. Would yeah, you, you brought be that up. Would J.K. Dobbins as a flyer, a prove-it deal? I don't think he moves the needle in the wide – or in the running back room. I think it's a risk-reward re- thing. Like, I, I do think J.K. Dobbins is, is like, top end, like a ceiling. He, he's a lot – he's a lot better than probably what he's going to get from somebody. Because of his injuries, so I think if you want to take that risk, then by you know you can you could get a good deal on him. But I don't know if I would go that route. I'm with you. I don't think he like necessarily moves the needle much. Right. I don't know. I don't think it's. I mean, it's not like I'm gonna like be angry at the signing. I just don't know. I still just think running backs one of those things you don't even have to pay. You don't even got to take a flyer on Dobbins. Just Dobbins. get one in the draft or get one of the UDFA. Why does J.K. Dobbins just make me think that he writes books kind of like Lord of the Rings? You're thinking of J.K. Rawlings that wrote Harry Potter. No, Dobbins makes me think of Lord of the Rings, not Potter. You're thinking of Dobby from Harry Potter. (laughs) No, I'm not. I'm I'm talking Frodo Baggins, baby. Frodo Baggins Baggins or whatever. Bilbo. (laughs) Why does Dobbins make you think of Bilbo Baggins? I don't know, Mike, but... Thanks for running that for me. Pretty sure J.K. Dobbins wrote some kind of weird fantasy books. Hey, Steve Atkins says a Colts podcast. Today. Hey, guys, have we gone sneak crazy? We're listening to Colts podcast. <laughs> hey, I don't think it's a bad idea, Steve Atkins. No, it's funny. It, I'm just it's a smart thing to go around and listen to other people's stuff sometimes, just to get a kind of a finger on the pulse. It is. I'm just being yeah. funny. Uh, yeah. A Colts podcast today said Colts get Snead and Casey gets a 2024 third. And a 2025 fifth. Oof. I think they got that. It's just not. They, I mean. They picked that up from this. Destin Adams. I'm told the Colts are sending a 2024 third and an official 2025. Destin Adams reported that this morning. They're saying it's not true. Uh, from all reports, they're saying that that's just not true. Again, nobody knows anything. Let's just put it that bluntly. Like, we, nobody knows. I wish nobody. You think I could track down the Titans, you know, 
player personnel operator or something like I did Cole, send him a pizza with the pepperonis yeah. that spell. Are you? Do you guys want Sneed? <laughs> Question. Let's first. do it. Let's do it. We got a two bomb from Brenda Pike. She says we already have twelve wide receivers on the roster. How are we going to add? Uh, that's what Mike was talking about. Yeah, it's like at some point if you keep if you keep adding, which I think they should add in the draft because it's so deep, and I think you could definitely. If you if you well, that's uh, the play, contract is right too. If you play your cards right, you could really hit a home run with a receiver in this draft. I think. If you were to have a Keon Coleman fall to you and you pass it up, you could regret that later. If you were to have even Lad McConkey sitting there and you don't do it, you could regret that later. Like you could be looking at, you know, DK Metcalf and Cooper Cup. You know what I'm saying? Like, there's just so much talent in the draft. Like, you're taking a shot. By, by taking a receiver that high, but at the same time, I, I do think if you're going to take a shot on a receiver, this is the draft to do it. It's pretty deep. Do you like the name McConkey better than Mahogany? Yeah. McConkey. Yeah, but no, Brenda, you're exactly right. Like, like Mike was saying earlier, where where do you, who do you start cutting out of the mix, right? Because, I think they're going to take no more than six this year. So, well, this is the premise too that they're just probably not going to cut Kadarius Tony and Sky Moore because it doesn't make sense. Maybe Tony because he's a moron. Sometimes. Maybe Tony, but I'm pretty sure you still have to eat two million or something, right? So, it, it, like people hate Sky Moore because he hasn't been uh, a game breaking wide receiver in his first two seasons. Steve, what do you but, rate Sky Moore? Uh, I, like, what do you rate that pick? I threw it on Twitter today, and I was rating the pick on a, on a A to an F. What do you give the Sky Moore pick as it sits right now? Right now, two years in. You I, haven't I see, seen what I graded, right? I don't even know what you're talking about. Okay. Um, so, let's see if we're on the same brain. Wave. So, two years in, I think you've seen small snippets of what Sky Moore is good at. And I think you could see what he could be good at. Uh, I think you also have seen enough to know that he's not like super versatile. I don't think you're going to be able to play him everywhere. Um, so him being a, they, they traded back in the second round. So they passed up like George Pickens for him. And that was the main, the main thing people's mad about, which if you love George Pickens that much, and you're still on that, bo- uh, on that train, you should probably be an AD Mitchell fan because they're pretty similar players. Um, Let's see, Sky Moore. I, I still think there's a, a shred of a hope that he can be a viable wide receiver. I think you do have to put him in the slot, though. So I wouldn't want to give it an F or even a D. I, I wouldn't go that low. It's definitely not an A. It's not a B. So I think you fall in the C range. Uh, I think right now, just because he's severely underproduced for a second round pick, I'll go C minus. Right. I was right there. And the reason I said was that he's a small town, you know, small college guy. He had to pick it up, and you would feel really dumb to grade him an F and cut him. And, and they then turned he goes around some year, and like, year, year three and be good. So I think you need at least like, one more each season before you could firmly say F, right? But everybody was right. quick to be like, F, F, F. It's like, yeah. Let's chill just a minute. Um, Well, I, I think that if he could go somewhere that could use him the way he needs to be used, I think Sky Moore could be pretty good. Like if you, if you put him in like Sean McVay's offense over there in Los Angeles, he'd probably eat. If Steve, uh, let me ask you this question, not to just cut you off, but let's just, uh, let me ask you one question. If you're Brett Veach and you have to make one cut, no, actually you got to cut two of these three. Which one are you cutting? Justin Watson, Kadarius Tony, Justin Ross. You keep the two, cut may, one. Well, no, I think you got to just keep one. And you're cutting two, and you got to cut two because I think we're under the assumption that Scott Moore is just not going to get cut. He's in year two of a four year deal. They're not going to cut him. Highest ceiling. It's funny because people would think it was Justin Ross, but I honestly think the highest ceiling is Kadarius Tony if he could ever get his mind right and focus on football because i mean the dude's just unreal athletic right 
Uh, again, ridiculous route runner. This could be a situation we're facing here for wide receiver six. I think Justin Watson's a no-brainer to me. I think uh, he's been solid as hell and done some big things for the Chiefs and been clutch. But to me, it's just like how much – can you risk – what Kadarius Tony or Justin Ross could be without giving them a fair shake. By, Are you ready to league? give up on Justin Ross? Would you know when he's had one season? I think if they're not going to take the training wheels off of Justin Ross and let the guy play and see what he can do, and, and then yes. But if they plan on actually giving it a shot, then no. Because I do think he has it. I, I just don't think. In our offense, I'm not think, sure. I'm not I sure. I think what he, the Chiefs, and I don't think Andy Reid has the luxury of giving a guy like Justin <coughs> Ross a shot. And I'm going to say, here's the well, reason. I mean, I think they had every chance in the world to do it this year. When we and had they didn't do it. Spot. Exactly. That's my But thing. why? Obviously, they're not interested. That has to no, be the only reason why. I don't think that's it. It has to be. This is why. You had every chance in the world. Chiefs don't have team. a luxury of doing that. Because we're in the middle of a dynasty and our fans and everybody expects excellence. We're not a team. Mike, that we were develops. far, far, I'm just saying, far, though, far from excellence at the wide receiver room last year. I'm just season. saying. I'm just saying, though, we were bad. So you can't really just throw Justin Ross out there to the Wolves and maybe it's worse. They're try- they were trying to like stop the skid and win games. You got to win games in KC. That's the I point. Guess, but I guess. If still you're think on it was Bears, a time to take a shot. Yeah, go throw them out there for 16 games and see what he can do. Because you're just if you suck, you suck. Right. But the Chiefs have to maintain winning, and I think that it makes us really hard pressed to be able to look at guys like that because it's tough to get on a field when you got a dynasty. Right. Yeah. I mean, you, they're fair point. Fair point. P Swizzle with the two bomb says still want Sky Moore and Car- Darius Tony on the team? Question mark. Um. My my sentiment is yes, I do still want them on the team, and here's the reasons why. Sky Moore and Kadarius Tony. Um they're both guys, like I said, they, they have high ceilings. Uh that they, they could prove to be good if you can find a way to use them correctly. More with more with Sky Moore than KT. KT would be an absolute beast if um he could just get his mind right and focus on football. I really think that's where that's at. Uh, but but the point is that I'm trying to make. I want him on the team because I, I'm not. We're not so quick to just start hating on a player because the you know it's the popular thing to do. Because I still see something in both of those guys. Uh, I think there's potential there, and they're both on rookie contracts, so it could be kind of silly to cut them. It'd be kind of it'd be pretty silly to cut them. Because you're getting them for next to nothing. So, I mean, would you agree, Mike? Yeah. Well, I was just looking it up. Uh, Kadarius Tony is going to make $2.53 million this year. If you cut him, you take a dead cap of 2.53. So if you cut him, you just cut him. Basically, he's playing for free. I mean, I get it. You're paying him 2.53. But if you cut him, you're paying 2.53. So whether Kadarius Tony is on the team or not, We've lost two point five three million dollars, right? Justin Watson, if you cut him, that's two million dollars. Are the Chiefs going to eat four and a half million dollars off two wide receivers at the chance to just develop Justin Ross? At the chance of just, you know what I'm trying to say? Yeah, I don't know, man. I just don't see it. I think it's these tough. Two, I think you have to keep these two here. I really do. Consider as much we as, only have as much as a lot of people don't want to hear that because they're so down on these two guys. I just think there's too much talent there at such a cheap price that it would be kind of silly just to right and consider we're going to be pretty much penny pinching throughout the season with the cap right? i'm not saying by any means they have to be out there taking a bunch of snaps like because i mean you got hollywood rasheed rice and then maybe if they add a, someone in the draft or whatever i mean they don't have to be out there a ton no, but how about they this? get mcconkey that's going to be your three rice right. brown well, and mcconkey is going to be the majority right how about this when you give Sky more snaps, can you give Sky more his snaps in the slot? Exactly. You don't, have to, you don't have to give him a bunch, but when he is out there, can you put him where he needs to be? Quit putting him outside. Right. Let Kadarius Tony work behind Marquise Brown. Let yeah. Sky Moore work behind, say, Dude, Ladd McConkey. If can that you was imagine? Your guy. Think about Kadarius Tony and Hollywood Brown both on the same side of the field. That's a lot of speed, man. 
Do you think That's picking a up a speed. player such as, and again, I keep using Ladd McConkey because he's like the prototypical ready to go right now slot. Yeah, right? I would love to have him because right? he's like that. the ready yeah. to go slot. Like he's been tearing mm-hmm. it up in the uh, his pro day Agreed. stuff. Do you think bringing in a guy like that though ups the game of Sky Moore and makes Sky Moore realize like, hey, I do. If I don't figure this out, these guys just drafted my replacement. And this is going to sound stupid because it's a rookie coming in, and we're talking about Sky Moore, who's two years into the league now. I think he could learn from Lad McConkey. Lad McConkey runs way better routes. Lad McConkey's such a smart player. That's why I like him so much. Like he literally sets up DBs. Like he's ahead of the game. He's playing chess while they're playing checkers. And I think that Sky Moore could learn some of that from him. That's where I'm at with it. Pacing. Yeah, he's the way he paces is just great. Flapjack City with the two bomb says Noah Kanega, by far the best football player name. I don't know. Ruka Rororo. And <laughs> Kool-Aid McKinstry are putting up a tough fight coming out of this draft right here. Yeah. I mean, there's been some good ones, right? There, there's some crazy names there's a out guy, there, man. Dude, I thought there was a funnier name in college this year that was insane. I have to go look. It was something ridiculous. I think my favorite name right now is Kool-Aid McKinstry. I mean, who is that his real name? Is his real name Kool-Aid? I don't know. That's but what his, I want to know. His coach is the Kool-Aid man if he gets drafted here. <laughs> Hello, Andy Reid, bust up Fits in there. Fits right in. Fits right in. We got a 10 bomb from Dub Freak. Says, if we don't Freak. address left tackle and free agency, do you see us taking O-line twice in the first three rounds? Left tackle, wide receiver, offensive guard. I do think it's very possible, Dub Freak. Uh, thanks for pointing that out, actually, because not only do we need to figure out left tackle, but we have a lot of depth to take care of at the offensive line position as a whole. Especially when we were talking about earlier, I don't know if we're going to be able to afford Trey Smith at all because the way they're paying guards and he's better than a lot of these guys that are signing for a lot of money. Uh, I think you do have to start doing it. We lost some of our depth. I mean, Cal, or, uh, I'm sorry, we have Caliendo, but um, why can't I think of his name right now? Allegretti. We just lost Allegretti. Darren Kennard, we lost him. He was in the back burner. Uh, there's some guys. They, I think they still have to re-sign Prince, Tega Winoga. Yeah, I don't think he's re-signed yet. There's a lot of depth pieces to fill. So I would not be surprised at that, Dub Freak. Like, if that were to happen, I wouldn't be surprised at all. I wouldn't either. Uh, we were seeing these guards getting signed for upwards of, like, 50 mil. Like, I, I just don't know. To me, guard is just one of those positions that it's not super, super difficult to fill. Uh, again, I think Mike Caliendo's done a heck of a job. He's a UDFA. I think he's done a heck of a job. I think he's going to keep getting opportunities this year. It wouldn't surprise me if, if Trey Smith walks, Mike Caliendo is your replacement. But you've got guys like Christian Haynes out of UConn. That he's going to be there, 6'3", 317. He's going to be there. He looks good. Zach Zinter broke his leg at Michigan. He's going to be there. He's a monster, 6'6", 309. He's going to be a possibility. Cooper Beebe out of K-State. Love him. Dominic Pooney out of Kansas. A lot of K-State Kansas fans here. Love those two guys. Uh, if you want to go small school, Mason McCormick out of South Dakota State, 6'4", 309. By the way, he's a little older, 24, but that dude flat out is a beast. His RAS score is somewhere in the nines, like a 9'6 or something. So there are people out there, and it would be stupid of Kansas City to not look at the interior offensive line in this draft, in my opinion. To- totally agree. Agree. Appreciate the 10, Dub. Um Iron Price, it's funny you brought this up because I was getting ready to mention it. I saw a comment in the chat and I wanted to address something, but uh, Two Bomb says Kadrapius Tony is a better name. Um, Kadrapius. So a lot of people talking about Kadarius Tony, you know, dropping past and stuff like that. I would like to remind people of this uh, that are really down on Kadarius Tony. Dude has a ridiculously high ceiling. I already covered that. Freak athlete. But what you saw from Kadarius Tony last year, that's not necessarily what Kadarius Tony is. Because he never was a, a guy that dropped passes with Florida. He didn't drop many passes with New York. He didn't drop passes last season when we used him. And he was great. Like, we, he was a very good receiver. People were high on him coming off of our 2020, uh, 2022 season. Uh, going into the 2023. And then, like, yeah, he, he dropped quite a few passes in, in 24. Or the 23 season, I'm sorry. We're not got to the 24 one yet. I hate the way that I feel like it should always be like a two year thing, but Hey, 2024 um, just kicked in, baby. 
Right, but in 23, he did have a couple of games where he just could it's like he couldn't catch a cold, right? Well, he dropped four but, balls this year. Well, I think the problem is that he dropped them at bad times and right. he it caused two interceptions. But again, he had four drops. Uh right. That was according to PFF. Uh, but right. BFF says in 2022, when he played the half season, the New York half season at KC, he had two. And then right. his rookie year with the Giants, he had three. So, I mean, he only had one. He's not a guy that drops the ball a lot. Yeah, he, he only had, had, a had bad one season. more. So, in his entire three year career, honestly, he's had what nine I think drops. happened, I think he had a bad day. He had a terrible day against the Detroit Lions. And I think that gave him the yips. I think it got in his for head. The entire season, right? It messed with him mentally. And I don't think he was able to recover. That don't mean he's not going to. I really like. I'm hard pressed to say that I think Kadarius Tony could really flip it, and this year be very effective, especially with other guys on the field like Rasheed Rice and Hollywood Brown. I think Kadarius Tony, they could put him in the slot and uh, do some damage. If all all he's got to do is, is focus on catching the ball before he tries to run, it's one little bitty thing. We know he can catch the ball. He's never right. had a drop problem before. Just hey, Kadarius, look, man, look the ball into your hands, tuck it, then go. Like it's that simple, and you could be, you could be great out there. Like so, I mean, I don't think Andy Reid don't know that. Oh yeah, I agree. I agree. Did you know that Kadarius Tony, by the way, in his first two seasons, you take this year out of it, Kadarius Tony's receiving grades in his rookie season was a seventy four four, and in twenty twenty two a seventy four. He was really highly rated. This year, he kind of took a dip. He went all the way down to about 63. So he took a pretty good dip. But if you put that in context, how what that would rank his first two years, if you just want to look at last season, if he would have just hit that 74 mark, he was right at the number 40th receiver in football. You know who that puts him ahead of? Devonta Smith, Zay Flowers, Mike Williams, Garrett Wilson, Christian Kirk, Cooper Cup, Calvin Ridley, Jacoby Myers, Kyle Phillips, and Terry McLaurin. He's right there right. in that grading area. Well, I'll tell you and that why was year have... one and two. Right. Well, I want to tell so you why I haven't would have had a better year. On... Yeah, yeah. I, I think he's got the potential. That's why I haven't given up on KT yet. Is, you know, the sentiment is that he doesn't care, that he doesn't focus on football, that he, he would rather be a musician, or he doesn't, you know, this and that. But the whole narrative, if you talk to, like, anyone – that has been in the Chiefs locker room uh, the previous year, they're talking about how he's locked in. Like, he was locked in. He's He was always working. He wanted to be better. He wanted to be good. And he was very, very focused on football. And they talked about him being a great teammate and really helping the locker room. Uh, now, the reason why we get that stuff is because, well, when you have games where you're dropping the ball like that, you have, like Rob Gronkowski said, it makes you wonder, is he really focused on football? Does he really love football that much if he's not correcting little mistakes? And then we see things like the random stuff he'll put on Instagram, and we're like, man, this guy's a fool off the field. Like, that's not gonna, it's not gonna work. Like, but I mean, Tyron Matthew, for instance. Uh, we got Charles O'Minahue out here right now that can't stay off of Twitter. Uh, there's guys that do stuff like that. Doesn't mean they're not good, at, they're not focused. So, I mean, I haven't given completely up on KT. I really do think he had the yips last year. And I think if you're just patient, I think Andy knows that too. I think they pulled him out because they knew that he couldn't get it together. But I don't think they gave up on him. I just thought they they didn't want to they didn't want him to be a detriment to the team and make it even worse. So I think it's one of those things, man. I think we could see him come back out this year. There's two possibilities here. I think you either see KT disappear into oblivion or i think he comes back out this year and he looks like he did two years ago and everybody's like damn now we really got a wide receiver crew with hollywood rasheed rice and carries tony playing good yeah i totally that's agree. where i'm at yeah did like i i want to say this with a grain of salt and i know that i already know what people's gonna say well they had more targets they had more targets they had more targets but with three, did, did, if you just think about it, isn't it crazy that Tyree Kill had nine drops last season? He had nine. Mm -hmm. Now, I know he had more targets. He had 167 targets. Yeah, he probably had more targets than anybody in the league. Right, right? compared to the Canarias Tony's 37. But I'm just trying to say that big receivers drop the ball too. You know what I'm trying to say? Like, it's just not like if you have Tyree Kill, no, he's, he's just sucking up everything. 
Right. But nine targets. Well, we know better than that. We saw Tyree Kill do you cause know interception many... after interception right. last year with the Chiefs. Do you know how many drops Puka Nakua had last year? How many? 13. That's wild, ain't it? It's wild. Uh, Devontae Adams had nine. I, I know that. I know that uh, Chiefs Kingdom, they have a they have a very short leash. Calvin Ridley had seven. Like, if a player screws up once or twice, like, right. we're quick to jump on them. And me and Michael make fun of people after the game. We're always like, go ahead and cut MVS. He sucks. He can't catch the ball. Um, I will say stuff like that. But, I mean, in the big picture, like, these guys, there's worse. Anthony, they aren't useful comparisons as in, yes, they get targeted more. But what I'm trying to tell you is if Tyreek Hill was on the Chiefs and he was targeted – a hundred and what he was targeted 167 times on the chiefs. He's not going to get that. He's going to have probably a hundred. So he's still going to have seven or eight drops in a way. That's all I'm a trying seven, to say is like, let's say a 7% drop rate. What was Tony's drop rate this year? 7% drop playing. rate. Tony's percent drop rate was. That's the only way. 12. So just a few points higher, but that's all I'm trying to say is was like, it really 12% drop, drop rate. How many targets did he get? Yeah, it was 12%. Uh, he had 37 targets, 27 receptions. He had four drops attributed. But they were all in the first game. Two in the first game. And if you take that away, he had zero drops the rest of the way. And he had one versus Buffalo, one versus New England. Right. Uh, well, I mean, I think I, I see what Anthony's trying to say. What What was the yeah, contribution? I understand that. Because I get it, are, it kind of goes both ways, right? Because... Like, yes, you're going to have a higher drop rate if you have a very, very low amount of targets and receptions, right? So if you drop two or three, four, it's going to look pretty, pretty freaking bad. Cortland Sutton. Get... Okay, look, Cortland Sutton, 87 targets. 87 targets. That's about double what Kadarius Tony got, right? Tony had about 40. Cortland Sutton had seven drops. That's an 11% drop rate. That's right with Kadarius Tony. How come you always call Cortland Sutton Cortland Sutland? So Corlin Sutton. I don't know. Did I? You always do it. We've done it before. We laughed about it last time. You were like, I don't know. I can't stop. I don't know. But you I'm just trying to say. Uh, yeah. It's just one of those things where it's like, I, I get it's not a perfect comparison, but isn't that sports in general? You can't compare anything perfectly. Like, no, two people are the same. You just can't do it. I'm right. just trying to make some kind of like, some kind of correlation that not everybody drops the ball, basically. Like everybody right. drops the ball. Plus, Cortland Sutton is the number one receiver on a team, and Kadarius Tony is not. So there's always that. Uh, David Howe says Tony did contribute a lot. Look at the games. I think Tony contributed a lot more than people think because, like, the bad overshadowed the good, right? Like, people didn't care when he did have a good play. And uh, I saw someone earlier say that he can't even do gadget plays. That's not true either. Kadarius Stoney ran the ball out of the backfield a few times very effectively. So I think I think they're still there. I mean, plus, not to mention, when you're talking about Tyree Kill or Cortland Sutton or somebody like that, you're talking about a guy getting paid top dollar as to opposed to a guy that's on a rookie contract. You know what I'm saying? So it's like, right, but you're also getting a guy, yeah. Cortland Sutton, that's very much featured in their offense, like way more than what. Yeah, exactly. We got. That was my point. Oh, Anthony said that was him too with the gadget place. Uh, yeah, no, I think I think that the, the small amount of gadget plays they did give them, I think, were pretty good. There might have been a couple like jet sweeps or something they tried that didn't pan out, but I think uh, Kadarius Tony's actually pretty effective when they give him the ball out of the backfield and stuff like that. He's got good field vision. He's got great speed. I think the only knock on Kadarius Tony this year was that he couldn't catch the ball. like and, and like Mike said, there was only four drops. It was just two caused interceptions. One caused a pick six that lost you a game. Well, That's going to overshadow a lot of good. Man. There was another game. I think it was yeah. Jacksonville. He had a fumble. So see, it, it, in everybody's Duncan, get minds, back in the pit. Who let Duncan out of the pit? In everybody's minds, that was another, you know, just giving the ball up, you know, a fumble play. But look, Manco Hardman did that too. Remember, he fumbled right at the goal line. Was that the playoff game versus the Bills? I'll tell you this. I've never, this is Jeez. one thing that I'll say over and over again, just to end this whole conversation, because let's get talk, back to talking about like Sneed and stuff that's relevant, like really relevant right now. But I will, I will end the whole conversation with this. I find it very hypocritical and kind of foolish 
for anyone that has made excuses or says that McCall Hardman was a big piece for the Chiefs all these years. He's been around for what, four years now? Five years? He's been around for a while, McCall Hardman. Four, I think. Was this his fifth? Yeah, I guess. I don't remember. Yeah, probably. So he's been around for that many years, not done a damn thing, but make a play here or there. Uh, he's made a bunch of bonehead plays, including the one you were talking about, where he fumbled the ball into the end zone, almost lost us a playoff game, uh, an AFC championship game. Um, and everyone gives him a pass. But they're so quick to jump on the I hate Sky more because he's not elite yet. They're so quick to jump on Kadarius Tony because he dropped four balls last year. But they always give McCole Hardman a pass. And, and I, I, don't, I think doing both of those things at the same time is pretty hypocritical. That's just me. It, I don't know. You, like, it is what it is. Like, yeah, they can always go back to McCall Hardman made plays in the Super Bowl. He caught the game winning pass in the Super Bowl. Well, I'm sorry, but I could have caught that pass. Well, a lot of people think McCall Hardman was not a bad pick. They think he's, if you, if you, uh, it's a terrible second round pick. They think if you, under, if, if you take DK Metcalf off the table and say, what it's if with bad. DK Metcalf? That compared to other receivers in that draft, he wasn't that bad. Dude, it's still bad. You are insane if you think trading up in the second round to take McCall Hardman was worth it. Like, it's just so bad. Like, it's to me, it's as it's almost as egregious as taking Clyde Edwards Lair at the end of the first round. That's just where I'm at with it. And if, if people want to give him a pass, that's fine. You feel free. But I, I think you're a hypocrite if you want to throw Sky Moore to the fire already but you want to give McCall Hardman a pass. That's, that's just when did I McCall get drafted. What year? I don't was know. It? Do you remember 2018? Maybe 2018 I don't know. I don't even know. I'm just curious who the other wide receivers were. I, I'm just curious to know people that don't agree with me or like think that I want to know why McCall Hardman gets a pass. Like what has he done so great to, for him to get a pass? Like, I really want to know that. Like, I don't know how you can just, throw Kadarius Tony and Sky Moore in the in the dumpster, but think it's okay just to keep McCole Hardman and keep paying this guy and giving up draft picks for McCole Hardman. McCole Hardman it's had wild. To be 20, he had to be 2019, surely. Yeah, yeah I don't it's, I don't it's that draft. Was it 19? It was 2019. Um dude, there were some pretty good wide receivers in that draft. Though. I don't know what everybody's talking about. Acting like there wasn't very many good wide receivers. Can we talk about this for a second? His career. <laughs> what? Is that real? McCall Hart, is it, am I on the right thing? His career stats, Mike. McCall Harmon's entire freaking career is okay. 166 receptions for 2000 yard 2200 yards probably what would it be that's pretty wild yeah i don't know why it gets the pass i don't and if you think like i actually think that McCole hardman in when he's healthy too you have to remember he's hurt a lot but uh which is right in the vein of Kadarius tony but i think when McCole's healthy i feel like he gets a lot of snaps too so, I mean, he's had ample opportunity. I don't know. Maybe maybe I'm wrong here, but I just don't think so. Here's here's the wide receivers that come out in that draft, come out in 2019. And people think that McCole Harbor was a good pick. Preston Williams played for the Dolphins. He went undrafted. Hunter Renfro went in the fifth round. Would you have taken Hunter Renfro over McCoe Harmon at this point? <laughs> Probably, yeah. Deontay Johnson went in the third round. Darius Slayton went in the fifth round, 171. Yeah. Flapjack City with the two bombs has got to see six weeks in season before, I believe. What? I don't know what you're trying to say. Mike, help me out here. Where we at? Got to see six weeks in season before I believe OF's back. Wait, I almost got it. He's got to see <laughs> at least six weeks of the season before he believes that somebody's back. 
it's cryptic. Is. Flapjack, are you trying to make us do work here? You're going to have to clear that up for me. I'll answer you. Uh, McColl was lighting it up in the red zone before he got hurt. Iron Price with the five bomb. Appreciate you, brother. McColl lit it up in one game particularly. I think it was against the San Francisco 49ers last, like the season before last. He had like three touchdowns. I think McColl, what was his total career? He does have more touchdowns than you would think. I think he has, what, 16 touchdowns in his career. Right. Something like that. Yeah. So, yeah, if you go back and look at it, uh, 2019, his rookie season, he had six touchdowns. 2020, he had four. 2021, he had two. 2022, he had four. Uh, Last year, he had zero. I still think that was a, a terrible. Like I don't know how anyone could think that was a good second round. You do pick, know. Pick. I just found an article, and this is why I was reading. But I found an article, and I don't remember. I don't know when this was written. By the way, appreciate the five iron price and the two flapjack. In twenty twenty, in twenty twenty, somebody wrote an article, and they claimed that McCoy Hardman was better wide receiver. Was a better wide receiver the year twenty twenty. Then Darius Slayton, Deontay Johnson, Hunter Renfro. I don't know if that panned out to 2023. Did it? I don't know. Lord Vaughn says people are going to hate us even more when we still sneed. And then he's got like a little Are you Eagles? Vulture. I don't think little the Eagles vul- are going to do it. No one gives a crap about the Eagles. Wait, is that what it is, Eagles? I think so. No one cares about them. They seriously go out and spend to no end every year. Try they form a super team year in and year out. And they they had a prayer the year before last, but they just couldn't beat the Chiefs. So I don't think anybody really is scared of the Eagles or cares. Let's see. I don't they gotta the run Eagles him back. Would, would the Eagles even want Sneed? He didn't go to Georgia. <laughs> That's true. Also, I think that there's going to be a bit of a – I think that uh, Jalen Hurts might be a little pissed off right now because he's not RB1 anymore. They went and got Saquon Barkley, so there's a bit of a – some drama in the running back room there. Maybe. Yep, yep. I don't Mikey, know. you wake over there? I'm, I'm just I feel thinking. Like, I feel I'm like you're draining. Like, I feel like you're fading on me. I feel like no, you're fading just, on me. Well, every I thought I, I was by myself for a while. And I ask you, you just kind of just ignore my question and say, let's move on. Mikey, but I, I, you haven't really said anything. You were you were reading a book, I think. No. Are you, are you reading Harry Potter? I asked you. You don't even know what you asked. It was about Hardman. Oh, I, we've already been there. Hardman stinks. There's nothing else to talk about. He wasn't worth a second round pick. That's wild. The fact that we gave up draft capital to move up and get him in the second is egregious. And the fact that we gave up more draft capital to get him back for, you know, seven games last year where he was hurt six. I'm not a fan. Just not a fan of it. Oh, no. I didn't mean to click. Sorry. But while it's there. Jared says, Steve, this is the biggest arrowhead I've ever seen on a hat. <laughs> yeah, it is. Yeah, it's pretty big. It's a big old arrowhead. Mike, my bad. Hopefully, you no, can I was find bringing a up Duncan. He said, let yeah. me narrow my question. We seem to be keeping Sneed. Mike, he yeah. called us clowns. We don't care about Duncan. I don't know what he was talking about. I really don't even know who he was referring to. Clown to the pit. Like, what? You can at least tell us, Duncan, why you called us clowns. Like, what take did we have that you called the clown? I, I'm kind of curious about that one. Uh, but he says, we can seem to be keeping Sneed. I don't know if that's for sure. But we need more cap space. When might they extend Reed and or cut extend Omenihu? Keep in mind, it's all about money. Yeah, it is all about money. I don't know if they're going to do either one of those. I, I don't mean, think I, they're going to. The I don't think they're going to keep Sneed. I don't know. Do what? I think there's way too much smoke around a Sneed trade for them to keep him. I think eventually the flame's going to light. I, I think so, it's wild that Chiefs Kingdom doesn't think Justin Reed is worth extending. That's uh, an L take right there. 
Like, why wouldn't he be? He's been solid, solid. Well, we've been saying that they need to extend Snee or Reed. Mm-hmm. They they need to do that. They could should have done that yesterday. They they could have done that a, a three months ago, and I'd have been fine with it. I, I think they need to cut Charles Omenihu. I like Omenihu, and it's nothing against him, but it's like this cat's not even going to play to like November. Like, why we're we just going to hand out money for free? Like, yeah. Do oh, here's there. one. Cody Irwin says, "Is anyone going to sign MBS?" Uh, Cody, I wish somebody would hurry up and sign him quick because I have this sinking feeling in my stomach. Like, what if they throw him like a one-year deal? You know where he might wild take, but you know where he may end up for it's all sudden done. Mm, Miami. No, back <laughs> with Aaron Rodgers in New York. It's a possibility. I, I could see. It. I, I, I feel like Aaron Rodgers hated him for dropping balls, though. I could see it, man. Could anybody else see that? I don't see it. Oh, Flapjack City says Hogwarts Legacy PS5, duh, bomb. Also, OF is offense. Okay, so now let's go back and find the question. Got to see six weeks in before I believe the offense is back. That makes more sense. There we go. I'm guessing hey, it's, it's because late. when you only give the one it's late and we're they, old, we couldn't put two and two together. They, well, week. they limit how many characters you can type, so people Did have they? to like do all that weird stuff. But uh, yeah, I don't think it'll take six weeks for us to see what the offense can do. Then again, I don't. It was kind of weird because remember we all had the feeling through camp and everything through camp through preseason when we were watching the 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 wide receivers and stuff, we all kind of thought the wide receivers were looking okay. And then all hell broke loose once they got to the season. So, yeah, I mean, a lot of people were on the whole thing like, Oh, where our receivers are fine. Cause we were big on trying to get D hop last year. And everybody's like, we don't need him. We're fine with what we got. But then when we got through the seat, like we get into the season and Kadaris Tony was having a, a rough time. Sky Moore didn't develop like people thought he was going to. And then all of a sudden it was, Oh, Oh, oh crap, man. Like we have no receivers. Now Patrick Mah- now we're now we're 12 13 weeks into the season Patrick Mahomes is so pissed off he's throwing his helmet on the sideline. Uh he looks like he's just freaking beat. Like that's where that's where it got us. So I mean, I don't know. C- game player says Kadrapius is the worst uh is worse than any receiver in the in the locker or the locker room Mike. What do you think? You think he's the worst one on the roster? Who? Tony? Yeah. At wide receiver? Yeah. No, nope. I think his potential's too good. I think the worst receiver on our team, and it's probably gonna make everybody a little sad, but it <laughs> it's not McCoe Hardman though, because he's not even on on the roster. I think it probably still has to be Justin Ross, don't it? <sighs> sure. If you go by talent wise, nah, I'm not gonna do it to him. We'll leave it alone. Who are you going to say? Nothing. The goo says OF means something else in everyone's mind. Yeah, maybe he was talking about it was going to take six weeks of the season to see if Kadarius Tony was going to start in OnlyFans. Could have. Could be what it was. Maybe. Kirk says, heard the Chiefs were going after Tyler Boyd, but the Steeds is ways of holding things up. I hope they don't. Let's be. I just don't really think Boyd moves the needle very much. And who do you want to give up for Boyd? I feel like Boyd's no different than Justin Watson. Like it's that type of player. I'm just saying right? who who do you give up if you get Boyd? So now you got you would have Boyd Rice, and you would have uh, Hollywood Brown. You're not. We've already discussed. You can't cut Kadarius Tony or whoever. So who would be your six? Like we're not going to draft one now. I'm not, I just think we're done with a receiver. More than likely. Until draft. In my opinion, I just don't see how a 30-year-old Tyler Boyd moves the needle for us. Yes, Anthony, we know Boyd's a free agent. Uh, Not an intriguing one in my book. I've never been on that. I've never been on the Tyler Boyd train. I'm not a fan. I feel like he's one of those players that can be decent if he has to be. Like, like even with the Bengals, it's like Tyler Boyd would step up a little bit and be a decent, uh, like a 
a decent target if T. Higgins or Jamar Chase were out and hurt. You know what I'm saying? Like, but he wasn't ever like that big of a difference, I don't think. I kind of feel like it'd be the same way on the Chiefs. Our price says wish you would have grabbed Adam Thielen. I I, I kind of liked Thielen last year. I thought he had enough in the tank to have got gave him a shot. Yeah. But they kind of, I guess they thought Justin Watson did that role. I think that, I really do think that's what they think of Justin Watson. I think they think he's kind of like the Adam Thielen type player. And, and you know, in all fairness, I will say that Justin Watson, he made some plays, man. He did. He made some clutch plays too. So, I mean, the, I, I'm not, I hate hating on Justin Watson. That's why I didn't mention a minute ago where I think that he might be the least in the locker room, like as far as the wide receivers go, like if you go pure talent and like ceiling, do you think he's the lowest on the list? I don't. I think Justin Watson's fine. Like what? Like no, he, I'm out of our wide receiver room. Do you think you really think that like Justin Kadarius, Watson has proved more in a game situation than? Scott Moore, he's proved more to game situation. Oh, uh, Sydney, you're right, Cornell Powell, but yeah, he's on a practice squad, so I don't even consider him in the you conversation. Know, he's proved more than Sky Moore. He's proved more than I get it, but Justin is, Ross. is his ceiling higher than those guys? I don't know. I don't know. Uh, do you feel like if he? It's not. Do you feel like if Justin Watson? And I don't know, but I do know he's super fast. I do know he runs pretty good routes. Do you think if he was given the the same kind of thing like a Sky Moore, where like you could just put him in a slot, and let a QB pepper him over and over again? Do you think that he would he could be good? Who Watson? Yeah, yeah. Like in a like a two thousand Tom Brady as Patriots he was offense. With Tom Brady. He was with Tom Brady. Well, that was in that him. was in Tampa Bay. The offense in Tampa Bay was a little bit different than the offenses Tom Brady had in, in New England. I will say that. I, I would be – I would almost say that the Tampa Bay offense with Tom Brady was more along the lines of the Randy Moss offense they had in New England than, like, the Julian Edelman guys. Right. Uh, yeah, I, I, I don't want to hate on Watson. I think he's a very valuable player, especially for what we pay him. And he's been very clutch. He's made big plays. But I, I feel like like someone like Justin Ross. Like I feel like Justin Ross's ceiling is is an ex receiver in the NFL. Do you think Justin Watson could ever be that guy? Mm. No. No. Isn't it also weird that he does have Justin a, he does, Watson to you look like he's six two, two fifteen? He don't, like, but he is, yeah. Isn't that crazy? Like He's basically almost the size of an X receiver. Do you feel like if we had Lad McConkey that he is similar to what Justin Watson is, but he would be much more effective and have a way higher ceiling? The way Andy uses Justin Watson, yeah, I could see him being similar. Uh, some people but, but think he like, drops the ball better? a lot, but he only had four drops this year off of – I mean, he had 52 I, targets. That's the same as Kadarius Toney. He drops more than anybody in the NFL, duh. So I'm saying, and, and he had two against Philly, so he had two in one single game. So he, he made a lot of clutch plays, though. Like I can forgive a drop here and there if you're out there putting in work, like doing it when we need it. Right, and that's that what big, Justin, that big bomb did. play against Minnesota where Mahomes threw that up. Mike, he caught a ball in the Super Bowl, like on a pretty big play that was clutch. He caught one. Was it against Buffalo where he got his feet down on Lego? It's pretty good. Lego. Is Lego messing with me? Why? He says Watson over Rice. KT and Ross. Huh. Lego. Did you did you work a double at the Waffle House tonight? I don't know if I can put I don't know if I can put them over Rashi Rice. No, I don't think I do. <laughs> I mean, Rasheed Rice, look, Rasheed Rice had a good year, and it's possible. Does Rasheed Rice take a step back next year? He overperformed this year. Do you think he takes a step back, or he maybe just sits idle for a year but just because teams now have a full year of him on tape and they may know how to game plan for him? 
Or do you Who? think just the fact that Hollywood Brown comes in, Rasheed oh, right. Rice goes no. to the next level? Uh, Rasheed Rice is going to continue to get better. I I'll think tell you why. Too. I don't. I don't have a problem. I, with I don't him. think. I don't think there's any mystery to what Rasheed Rice is. I think he's a guy that you know is going to get. He's going to get his targets, and he's going to create yak. I don't think that you can necessarily game plan for that, especially when you have Travis Kelsey out there now, Hollywood Brown. I don't think it's like you could focus on it and be like, we can't let that guy get the ball. Like I, he's always going to do his damage by finding a soft spot in the zone and creating yak. Like, and he got really, he got pretty good at finding those spots in the zone late in the season. And I think that's why he started to, you know, trend up. Right. Joey, Joey says you guys are gassing lad too much. He barely did anything for Georgia this year. Joey, Joey, he was injured. He had a back injury. He had a foot injury. Go watch the tape. Go look at Lad McConkey. He's a better route runner than almost anybody in the draft. Yeah. I think, uh, I mean, if we're gassing him, everybody is. Like, I think Daniel Jeremiah just put him in his top 30. Yeah. A lot of people think he, there's no way he makes it out of the first round. Like, impossible. I, I think his he's a late day, first rounder his, to early second dude, rounder. His but, pro day the other day at Georgia was absolutely like breathtaking. Dude, like, if he's you, just I challenge I you this. Who said that? Joey Joey. Yeah, Joey Joey. Go watch tape. Go watch some tape on Lad McConkey and really watch Lad McConkey. Watch the way he runs routes. Watch the way he paces himself. Watch the way he literally leads dbs in the wrong direction and just absolutely makes them look foolish sometimes um he he's that guy now will he blow up to be a cooper cup that's yet to be seen and that's hard to do but um there's a the few, potentials there there's a few wide receivers in this draft like there's a few guys that are big 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 potential right so if you look pit. at the if you look at the draft, like, okay, there's some clear-cut guys that are going to do well. That's the top three. Harrison, Neighbors, and Odunze are all going to be pretty good in the league. I think mm-hmm. Odunze may be a guy that maybe don't pan out as much as people are big on, but at the same time, I don't think that. Uh, but then you've got guys in the middle of the board, like Brian Thomas Jr. and Adonai Mitchell, and you're like, well, these guys have tons of potential. They may need a little bit more work, but those guys could be alpha wide receivers, like right there in the middle of the first round. So then you look at your next group, and it's Xavier Worthy, Lad McConkey, Ricky Persall, Xavier Leggett, Keon Coleman. If you don't think Lad McConkey is the best route runner out of all them, minus Ricky Persall, I'd say they're pretty neck, 1A and 1B. Those two guys are the most ready-made, ready to come in and play instantly there are. So there's no working. There's no coaching them up. These guys are going to get the offense and come in and do well. You know what I'm trying to say? So those are like can't-miss kind of guys. So do you would you rather have a guy like that, Steve? That's like he runs a four three nine, right? Lad McConkey. He runs a four three nine. He uh runs routes like buttery smooth. Or would you rather have a guy like Xavier Worthy who's smaller, but he is faster and quicker and shiftier, could be a bigger home run threat, but you're gonna have to literally work with him. Like do you, would you rather take the sure thing or would you rather have like the dynamic upside guy? Uh, with the chief situation right now, I want the sure thing. I want the guy that can come in and plug and play. I think I would rather have that guy too. I I think even at 32, if you reached, and I don't even know how much of a reach it is. If you was to reach on a Ricky Persall, I'm fine with it. I think a guy that can come in and play the position right now and do, and do very serviceable and give you 30, 40 good snaps a game and they don't mess up. They don't, you know what I mean? Just go out and mm-hmm. do your job. You want a guy like that. Like, to me, yeah, you you want those big guys like A.D. Mitchell. He, like I said, he could be an alpha in this league if you let him. He could literally be like a C.D. Lamb if you'll let him, but he's got to yeah. get his attitude right. Prince Tiger says, damn, Justin Watson's 215. Probably that's the reason he can't run fast. You can put him at the edge for sure. Uh, actually, he run a four, four. he's a 4-4 four, four guy. He's pretty fast, actually, Justin Watson is. Just a lot of Deceptive, deceptive. Joey, Joey says Cooper Cup only had one good year. Um, where you been at, Joey? Joey. Cooper Cup had 869 yards in his rookie season with five touchdowns. 
2019, he had 1,161 yards with 10 touchdowns. Uh, 2020, he went for almost 1,000 yards. 2021, he went for almost 2,000 yards with 16 touchdowns. Uh, then in the following two years, even though he missed games because he was hurt, he still went for 812 yards, six touchdowns, and 737 yards, five touchdowns. Cooper Cup is not a one-year guy. He's been it every year. Cooper Cup's only thing is is injuries. Like he's like, I wouldn't I wouldn't go as far as saying he's injury prone, but he's definitely not had. Did you know, great Justin luck. Watson ran a four-four flat at his pro day. Yeah, I told you he's pretty fast. And you know what? They actually have him measured in professionally at the NFL Combine, 6'3", 225. So he's actually, I don't know how the 6'3 to 6'2 thing got off, unless one of those were just wrong. But his official height says 6'3", and his official weight was 225, which means he could have maybe lost weight. You know, that's something they'll do all the time. But that's pretty crazy. 6'3", 225? Like, Len Zierlein actually compared him as a fourth to fifth round draft projection and compared him to Chris Hogan. That was his player yeah. comp on him. Chris Hogan. Because they're white. You got to compare the two. White you always players. have to. Yeah, that's what they always do. Brandon Chester says, can you imagine reaching on Worthy, Xavier Worthy, and him being equivalent to Hardman? We'd be calling for Veach's head. Yes. I think I don't think – I don't know if you can really call for Veach's head at this point because he's proven to be so – I mean – look at the last five years but um it would definitely start making me question some things that's for sure look wrapping this back around to legeria sneed it's it's pretty rare to get player for player deals in the nfl but we just seen one the other day didn't we i don't know did we oh yeah it was a uh, kenny pickett was it he traded for a player no, I think they traded a pick who, for him. Who was the? There was a player for player trade. I can't remember who it was. But by the way, what if we would have threw Sneed and what if you got it like a Cooper Cup for Sneed kind of deal and, and played with it a little bit? Why didn't the Chiefs ever explore that? Because the Rams needed a corner. I'm sure they've explored all these options, right? I'm pretty sure they've looked at everything. I'd have been kind of fired up to pull in Cooper Cup. Dang, him and our pull in Hollywood Brown, Cooper Cup, hmm. and Rasheed that, Rice. It's getting Plus unfair, a draft man. Pick? Yeah. Oh, that would have been nasty. More than likely, they wouldn't have dealt Cooper Cup, though. Yeah. Yeah. Anthony says Cup's injuries have been the kind that take more than a year to 100% recover. Um, and he catches everything and was open all the time, no matter the coverage. That is 100% true. You know what's funny, too? When he come out, he actually he actually fell in the draft because why? He ran like a 4 6 1. Who's right. And you know like? what? Keon Coleman. Yeah, I saw where somebody said Coleman slept on. Puka Nakua run like a 4 6 something, too. Yeah, so Coleman's going to be a beast. Um, I think we overvalue speed just a tad bit. Well, what's funny is uh, then again, you always have to compare the white guys to the white guys. But I, I do say that Lad McConkey's in that Cooper Cup range, and it's because of the things you just said, Anthony. Like, I feel like he's a guy who's just such a good route runner. I think he's always going to have, he's always going to be open. Like, I feel like. He's always going to be an option to throw to. He's just smart and he knows where to be. Yeah, I agree. I agree. I'm looking right now. I'm trying to see if I can find any more Sneed news going down. Everybody's trying to figure out what's going up with Sneed. Chief Kelsey said there was a tra uh, player for player trade. Yeah, I don't remember who it was, but it did happen the other day. Gil with the freaking 10 bomb. Appreciate you, Gil. Uh, he says, overhaul the offense, but leave the defense mostly intact. Keep the big names on the roster where possible. I agree. I agree. I think that's what you got to do. Uh, I think that's what the Chiefs have been doing. I think that's what they're proven to do with signing back Chris Jones. It would just been silly not to. I think Sneed, Sneed wasn't really a big name until this season. Now he's a household, not a household name, but a lot of most football fans – know who Legarius Sneed is now. But I just feel like he's at a position where it's just hard to pay that much. So I'm with you. I think uh I think if like this defense, Mike, even if you lose Sneed, you, you take a bit of a step back at the corner position, but not not like as much as people think. And and then you still cut Chris Jones. You still got your linebackers out there. You did lose Willie, but I mean Leo's been stepping it up. Um 
do you think the defense really takes that much of a step back if you just leave it alone? Like if you trade Snead off for draft picks right now, but then you really focus on loading the offense up, do you think our defense is close to what they were last year, but all of a sudden our offense is right back to where they were two years ago? I think the offense definitely gets better, obviously. The offense is better because of Hollywood Brown. I don't think people really understand what putting that amount of speed back into our offense looks like. He was right there with Tyreek Hill. He may have ran a faster 40-yard time than Tyreek Hill at the combine. I'm not for sure. Right. I could have lied about that just now. Who'd but uh, it was it was pretty similar. I said he may have run faster than Tyreek Hill at the combine. Who? I'm not for sure. Hollywood Brown. I don't know if Hollywood ran at the combine. He ran a 4-2. Well, I'm four just saying two, his pro day. At his pro day. He clock. ran a 4-2-7. I don't know what Hill did. Right. I can't. Okay. But point is, that's a lot of speed. So I, I think our offense is automatically better with that and Veach will go to the we are going to draft one there's no doubt about it he don't now will it be first round I don't know his MO is second round whether he moves up moves down whatever you can't really move down the second round uh, that's impossible but I do think our offense gets better um, no doubt so no doubt the offense is better does the defense get worse slightly Sneed is good but the way our defense is designed is we're still going to get after the quarterback. They're going to do everything they can. And I, honestly, even with Snead gone, I still think our biggest need is a pass rusher at defensive end. I still don't even think it's a corner. I think Josh Williams is going to be completely fine. Naze is going to be back, and he was already playing for first-team reps before he got injured. Nick Jones has been injured all year, and he was playing pretty well. We're still going to take a flyer. They brought in uh, the kid from UK that was with Dallas. He's still on the team. By the way, people are forgetting we, we brought in some wide receivers. We brought in Shy Smith out of South Carolina a few years ago. He's on the team right now. Like, he signed a futures deal. Shy Smith, they signed somebody else. I'm not saying these guys are going to make the team, but we've got a lot of, like, depth to look at. So, there are going to be a lot of things. And Nico Remigio has still got a shot. But, yeah, I don't think our defense steps back as much as we think. I do think Josh Williams is primed to be able to step in. Is he going to be as good as Snead? No. But Snead... People forget how good Snead was this year and think that Snead's always been this good. Snead had one great year this year. He did not have a great, great year the three years prior. He had a good year, and then his first two years were pretty decent. above average. But I'm just saying, like, he's not been locked down, shut down this great 2023 season his entire te- you know, his entire tenure. It's not been like right. that. Right. Right. Yeah, appreciate the 10, Gil. Man, Joey Joey still saying Cooper Cup's overhyped. Joey, I'm sorry, but if you're averaging over a thousand yards a season and close to ten touchdowns, like I don't a season like that's crazy. That's crazy talk. And you have to remember he's probably missed what a good season to a season and a half in injuries. DJ and he readers, still averages that. Yeah. Readers off the market, by the way. He went he to the Detroit. Yep. Uh, we can talk about this. If they go to the draft, Steve, who do you like in the draft to replace uh, LeJarrius Sneed? And do you think they have to take somebody early? Because we know Veach hits late. But how good is Veach? It, it seems like he gets overhyped as like this wizard of corner depth. Why? Well, he should, right? But I'm just saying, like, so how good is it? Because Justin Watson is a serviceable corner, but he's not necessarily. Like, if you had to go into the season starting him at corner, you don't feel that good about it. You probably draft. Josh Williams I'm fine with. But we haven't got to see, like, Naze was doing well, and I think he's a fine depth piece, but if he had to be, like, the number two with Trent McDuffie, I still maybe get a little worried. Yeah, we, And again, yeah. Nick Jones, you still get a little worried. So it's like, he well, he gets serviceable guys. It dep- Okay, look, I don't think you're going to – First of all, by replacing Sneed, it doesn't necessarily have to be a player that plays like Sneed. If you want to replace right. Sneed for exactly what Sneed is, I think TJ Tampa, which means you'd have to go second round. Uh, I love TJ Tampa him. as a as a spot on replacement in my right. opinion. Now, I, you don't have to go that route uh, exactly. So I think that a player that could be very very good who could drop a little bit because of an injury recently is Kool-Aid McKinstry. We talked about him earlier. Earlier, if you were to be able to snag him in the second round, that's killer value there. Um, there's some guys out there. And, and you don't necessarily have to replace Snead. You just need to keep the keep the pipeline going, man. Because I, I really do think 
would it surprise you, Mike, if in two or three more years that Josh Williams was a guy that we were looking at saying, man, he might go get paid by somebody else? No, I think Josh Williams is the very next one in line to do the Sneed thing. Yeah, th- Josh Williams is a big time physical cover corner, like a man to man guy that can beat you down. He's Long, got a lot of good physical fast. traits. Yeah, yeah. He's very good at letting. Uh, if he gets beat, he gets it out of his memory really quick. He's good mm-hmm. like that. Um, but I'm just saying, like, Veach does well with corners. There's no doubt about it. But Veach is not the only person picking the corner. It's our scout. It's not like Veach is just running in with all the knowledge of all these players and he's like, hey guys, I've got it all. Screw the scout, screw the coaches. You guys don't have any input, right? So Veach gets a lot of credit, but he also takes a lot of heat. It's not just Veach making these calls, man. This is an entire organization in general. But I think our entire organization does a pretty good job at corner and safety, to be honest, to a certain degree. Uh, But I'll say that I don't think it's that big of a deal this season, I just don't think if you take Steed off this roster, we just we just instantly miss the playoffs. You know what I'm trying to no. say? Like it's just not like that, in my opinion. Honest to God, don't think it's going to be like a huge blow, like people think. I, I think it could almost, I think we could almost maintain where we were last season without him, and that's without even replacing him with anybody. I think we have a good defensive back room. Uh, do I think there'll be a bit of a drop off and a bit of adjustment to make? Absolutely. But I don't think it'll make our defense go from being really, really good. Like they were to, I mean, they're still going to be really, really good. Spack's still going to have it going, man. We got all the big pieces in place. Yeah, I agree. Mike, somebody in the chat said Josh Williams gets burned a lot. Is that, do you think that's a, that's a true statement? I mean, any kind of, okay, look, you got to remember all this, all this is true. And all this could be untrue at the same time. Like we've always said this, Josh Williams is a kid that comes from HBCU Fayetteville state university. Please raise your hand. If you even know what that is, if you know who the logo is of a Fayetteville state, you know what I'm trying to say? If you know what the mascot right. is, let us know. Because most people don't have common knowledge of that. I'm sure you can go to Google. But the point is, trying to make that jump, and you're telling me in two years he's not going to get burned at some point? Like, again, if you go back and look at... Here, I'm just going to do a little exercise. Josh Williams, by the way, he ran a 4-5-3 at the combine. And people's like, oh, that's slow. 4-5-3 is not that slow. He's a point zero eight seconds off of a four four forty, and if you don't think his thirty three inch arms are going to make up for that, you're out of your mind. Because we've seen him tip a few balls that got picked. Uh, mainly, wasn't he the one that tipped that ball against Burrow, and we won the uh, AFC Championship game over that a few years ago, wasn't it? Yes. Or maybe he was the one that picked it. I, I don't know. But anyway, I'm going to go and look at Josh Williams. Uh, I'm going to look at some of his coverage scores for his first two years in the league. Well, I mean, his rookie season. And try to compare. His rookie season, he did let up uh, 374 yards and five touchdowns. So that sounds pretty rough, right? Like a 56% completion rate against him. Uh, But if you take that from the first year to last year, uh, it went down to 141 yards and two touchdowns. So that's a pretty significant uh, improvement. Not to mention, if you were to go back and look at the rookie season of Sneed or Traverius Ward, you're going to see similar numbers. I'm almost almost positive. Well, Jerry Sneed's coverage grade this year was a 72. Josh Williams was a 72.6. Now, granted, he only played 323 snaps to Sneed's freaking 900. Right, there's but, no comparison there. It needs better. Yeah, there's no comparison. Yeah, Again, yeah. these are hard to do, but you try to look for like similarities. So, for example, if you go back to Sneed's rookie year, let me find one where he played similar. So, for example, okay, here's one. For example, Sneed, uh, Josh Williams, in two years has played 760 total coverage snaps, and his average is about a 69%. So Sneed's first, well, he only has one season where he played right at 900. That was his second year in 2021. 
his coverage grade was a 62. So that's what I'm trying to say. In his first few years, Snead was asked to do a lot more in his first few, first few years than Josh Williams was. Josh Williams has not been asked to cover. Snead was asked to go in and play a lot of snaps. His first year, he played 400, but his second year, he was almost a thousand snap guy. So Snead got thrown to the fire quick. And yeah. his grade, his grades suffered. Snead's first year where he played 900 snaps was a 62 coverage grade and a 64 defense. That's what we were trying to say. He allowed the most receptions of any corner in football. The most completions was Snead in his second and his third year in football. Yeah, Just this that. year did he quit that. Yeah. He, he had the most missed tackles on the team the past two years, minus this not 2023, but 2022, 2021. He had the most right. t- missed tackles of all players on the Chiefs. So it's not like Sneed was just drafted out of Tulane and he just come in and he was this overwhelming wor- world beater. He was made into what he is. He was molded. Josh Williams is only getting 300 snaps a season. Do you think if he now has to go up to eight, 900 snaps this year, I think he learned quickly, in my opinion. You know what I'm saying? Like all the intangibles are there, in my opinion. Yeah, for sure. Yeah, it's hard to see the future on this kind of stuff, but I think you're fine though. I really do. I don't. I don't think it's like a huge blow, uh, especially if you start accounting in the money factor. Uh, Lonnie says, uh, "Exactly what area are we lacking depth? Uh, in my opinion, offensive line, defensive line, pretty much it, right? And by defensive line, it's just if it's just they, end. Yeah. It's defensive end." Yeah, well, now that they've re-signed Mike Pinnell, Derek Noddy, Turk Wharton, uh, you got Chris Isaiah Jones. Bugs, you got um, um, Neil Farrell Jr., and then, of course, Chris Jones. Right, so defensive uh, tackle yeah. is going to be yeah. fine this we're season. Edge-wise, uh, we're looking at Carl Loftus, um, Felix. B.J. Uh, Thompson and Charles Lemonahue. That's it. And Charles Lemonahue. Billy Carey. But look, Herring. do you really want to go into the season with Malik Herring being your guy? No, but I do think he puts in valuable snaps sometimes and don't get enough credit for that. Do you think Malik Herring could maybe be a poor man's version of Mike Dana if we don't sign him back? I don't think Malik Herring's ever going to get after the quarterback that much. You don't think edge. Malik Herring think... could even get to Mike Dana's floor? I don't see it. So far, what I've seen from Malik Herring is that he sets the edge very well. And he's helped a lot in run defense. That's what I see. I don't see him. Now, I think he has made a, a play or two as far as sacks go. But uh, just he don't seem – I don't th- I don't feel like he's going to be the type of edge rusher going to take a game over or anything by any means. Or even like – like Mike Dana had games where he did that, though. Like Charger – there's a Chargers game where he hurt Justin Herbert. He's going off that game. You know? Right. Um – I don't see yeah, that. I, but but to be honest, I think pass rush. We have got to get some pass rush. Look, there's yeah. a lot of people that still think George Karloftis is not like a clear-cut number one pass rusher in this league. And I think he's kind of like the T. Higgins. He's right there on the verge. Dude, I don't. What, what else can George do in two years to make you think that he can't get there? I mean, this well, guy's been phenomenal. I'm just saying he's on the verge. Yeah, right. He, I'm just saying if someone that don't think Because that, he doesn't. Look, George doesn't have the greatest, you know, pass rushing moves. He doesn't have the greatest closing speed. So he is going to have a ceiling. I don't think, like, he's going to get to, like, Reggie White in his career. Like, it's just not happening. So I'm just saying, like, he's a serviceable number one, but I don't – kind of like T. Higgins. If T. Higgins was your number one receiver, he's probably a serviceable number wide receiver one, but he's not, like, going to be Justin Jefferson. That's all I'm trying to say. I think I think that uh, I mean, is he ever going to be T.J. Watt out there getting twenty-two sacks? That's in the my season? point. That's all I'm trying to say. I, I doubt it, but I think that he could definitely be fifteen plus. I'm not I think trying George to say that, that Karloff yeah. stinks. I'm not trying to say he's not good. I'm just trying to say Karloff. You still need somebody on the other side, and you still need depth and rotation. Right. I I, I really think so. I think we need to see a big step from Felix this year. I think that makes a big difference. Uh, if they if they opt to keep Charles O'Menahue, which I don't think they will, do, do you think that they will? I feel like saving seven million dollars on a guy that's not going to play next At this year. Point, seems, I don't know. It seems like a no brainer, but I don't know. Um, 
I think they have to look. Uh, a lot of people talk about Darius Robinson in the draft. I think that's a good target. Um, I'm with you. They have to pass rush is necessary. Mike, we were talking about the other day, even though he's, I don't know if he exactly fits into our scheme, but Hassan Reddick. <laughs> right. He could be available, right? Hassan Reddick. You know what, though? He's just, he's not like necessarily like your prototypical pass rusher. He's but, a beast, though. But it's such, situ- yeah, like situational kind of guy. Like, and they still stood him up like a linebacker a lot. And I just, we don't really, I mean, I don't want to say we don't do that because we'll do that with Leo. We'll do that with Willie sometimes. But I don't know. Right. Yeah. And then, of course, like we said, the offensive line depth, too. Uh, we still got to figure out what the hell we're doing with left tackle. I, I I almost doubt that they will go into this season just saying, Wanye, you don't even have to fight for this spot. It's just yours. Like something tells me they're gonna either going to draft somebody or sign back Donovan Smith. They're going to do something to where there's other option besides putting a second year in there and being like, here you go, Bl- block for Patrick Mahomes blindside. You know what I'm saying? So other than that, so I think they got to figure that out, but definitely need – depth all across the offensive line not only do they need it right now just because there is none we've lost some guys but they also have a lot of big contracts coming up next year so i think yeah, they gotta start looking at offensive line so that's my that's the two positions i think that they're lacking depth basically just do, do you agree with this do you agree with this uh george Karloftis is raked Total tackles, 26 total tackles what he had last year. He's the 30 tied for 39th defensive end in all of football with thir- with 26 tackles. Tied for 39th. Eight assists, tied for 55th. Sacks, 11. He was tied for 18th. So he was a top 20 sack guy. Um, That's huge. His overall grade was a 64, and his run defense was a 58. So I'm just trying to say, like, is he a complete thousand percent great top fifteen guy in the league? It's very debatable. Can he get there? I don't think there's a reason he couldn't get there, but where he sits right now, I don't think. Well, you have to think there's two defensive ends on every team, Mike. So top fifteen is the elite of the elite. That's my point. You need you're but you're always after an elite guy. You're always after that top fifteen. Like the Chiefs That's what I'm saying, a top fifteen but- guy. I mean, if you're one of the top 32 edge rushers in the league, that puts you in the top half of all edge rushers. Yeah. So I, I mean, I think George is bad. definitely. I think George is definitely in that talk. Yes, he's a serviceable guy at number one, but you need two. And in the way the league's going, you not only need two, you probably need three, and you definitely need a guy like Chris Jones because the faster everybody's getting the ball, you need a guy to come up the middle. Like you just yeah. need somebody in the face quick. I think yeah, that's Chris another Jones reason invaluable. I think that's another reason George is struggling in this era. I feel like maybe fifteen years ago, George Karloffis would have probably had twenty five sacks in a year. Uh but nowadays everybody's just get rid of the ball in two seconds. Get rid of the ball. And you know what I mean? He's not that fast close the well, gap. I, I will tell guy. you this. I will tell you this. From rookie season to second season, George gained a half step at least. Because he started closing on plays. George is the type of guy that's going to put in every bit of effort to get better and to do better. So I think a lot of improvement coming from him. Uh, and I think we'll continue to see that year to year. Yeah, I agree. Uh, Brandon says, would you take a shot on either of these injured tackles, Bakhtiari or DJ Humphrey? You know, Is Humphrey the guy that they just cut from uh, Arizona? Tennessee? Oh, Arizona, I meant. Um I don't know. I don't like him. I think DJ Humphrey could play, but with that injury, when, I mean, when's his slate to come back? I don't know. I don't either. Don't know. Well, we're, we're probably going to wrap it up soon, though, guys. So uh, get your last minute questions in. Appreciate you guys for being here. Shout out to all the people that uh, put in super chats tonight. We've yet to to add a member to the ACU crew tonight. No new members. So if you guys feel the need to help grow the ACU crew, just throw out some memberships. Let's just add some of these people in. We've had over a thousand in the chat for most of the most of the stream. It's been crazy. Let's get some of these people in the ACU crew. 
Uh, but definitely appreciate you guys. So shout out all the people that did the super chats. Um, hit the like button if you haven't done that. Hit the subscribe button if you haven't subscribed yet and you're a Chiefs fan. Uh, and just real quick, while I'm plugging stuff, merch.allchiefedup.com. I got your all horned up shirt on there with the apostrophe. That's a little tiny arrowhead. So uh, that's on there. Uh, merch.allchiefedup.com. Get yourself some merchandise. and Also, patreon.com slash allchiefedup. Become a patron for $10 a month. Get a lot of the extra content over there. Um, and you have a lot of content that you, you'd you unlock for free immediately. So uh, definitely go take a look at that. And uh, appreciate you guys for hanging out with us on a Saturday night. A little later than usual, but it's been it's been fun. It's been a good one. Uh, but yeah, get your questions in. If you got any questions, uh, make sure to uh, either put something out there to make them stick out. That way we can see them. Or uh, Super Chat. We'll definitely make sure we get to all the Super Chats before we're out of here. So, yeah, yeah. What you looking at, Mike? You're out. You're on your. You're in your zone some again. More, some more Sneed stuff. Uh, actually, it's people are starting to say that the guaranteed money that Sneed's asking for is the one part of the deal that's making this a deal breaker. And I just said this at the beginning. Ballard is not a guaranteed money kind of guy. Maybe the winds are shifting to the Titans. Possibly. Possibly. Pops shows up with the five gifted. There Appreciate you, old man. He's out there giving the gift that keeps on giving. Uh, if you guys uh, make sure you have your gifting turned on too. That way, if people do gift memberships, you can actually get them. Uh, appreciate you, old man. Appreciate you. Steve Duncan, he wants to go back to the pit, man. He said you need a vacation. <laughs> <laughs> man i'm always on the go from the time i wake up to the time i go to bed you know it just never stops when you work you you we, we essentially work two jobs right yeah and then i have 25 kids to take care of so yep. yeah yeah i probably do need more. a vacation he's not wrong he's not yeah, wrong. you're right let's answer a few more tgz says any running backs looking good in the draft the um, dude from I'm texas the What's firm his name? believer Steve's just going to jump right in. Um, I'm a firm believer that the there's no running back is going to go in the first two rounds. I just don't see it happening this year. I don't see it. I think everybody that needed a running back got it in free agency. I thought there was an astronomical run on those. Yeah, that's true. So honestly, I think you could get one in the third round, and you've got some. You've got. I think there's two guys. Actually, I, I'm going to hold that back. I think there's six guys in this draft that technically in any other draft probably rank second-round scores, and that's Trey Benson from Florida State, Jonathan Brooks out of Texas. Love both of them. I think Marshawn Lloyd from USC looked good, but Blake Corum, Michigan, Jalen Wright, Tennessee, and Braylon Allen, Wisconsin. And I, also, I think Isaac Garendo done enough at his pro day that he could sneak into that third-round area. So I think all those guys will be drafted, but I think they're going to be day three and beyond. So it's very possible that the Chiefs in round five could take a shot at a running back, right? And you could still hit on like a Blake Corum in round five. How crazy would that be? There's a, there's a lot of intriguing guys in the draft. I'm with like, you. I don't think any will get taken high. But I think there's a lot of guys all the way. I mean, even if you go late rounds, I like uh, Frank Gore's kid. I think he could be like that little type back, uh, like a, a Darwin Thompson or a right. – uh, What's did his name? The Anthony Thomas, something like that. Did you see where Will Shipley from Clemson just ran a monstrous like? Yeah, Will Shipley's a good one. Number. I, I think it. I didn't think Clemson had their pro day already, but he ran it somewhere. It was like making the rounds the other day. It was insane what he ran. It's like right. a four then, three nine or something. And then you got your Isaac Garendo from Louisville that ran a four three at two hundred twenty right. pounds. Um, I mean, there's some there's some good ones. I like Ray Davis from Kentucky. I think he can do a lot of different things. He can catch the ball in the backfield too. Um, who else? I mean, there's quite sleepers. A sleepers. Kamani Vidal from Troy. I think he's good. I think he's like a poor man, Josh Jacobs. A lot uh, of Cody people like Schrader uh, out of Missouri Ali. is good. What's his name? Yeah, the dude from uh, Rasheen Ali. Rasheen um, Ali. Of course, you got Bucky Irving out of Oregon, but. Uh, Dude, Dylan Loeb out of New Hampshire, I think, is good. Jaden Sheridan out of Monmouth. Those are a couple guys that can catch the ball in the backfield and play. Yeah. Uh, I think you're looking pretty good. Even the UDFA market, man. There's a couple kids. Uh, Jace McClellan out of Alabama could probably be a UDFA. Uh, Dylan Johnson out of Washington could probably be a UDFA. So you've got some guys there. So 
we'll see. I, I, I do think it's a good it's a good draft to grab a guy late. Yeah, I think so too. Leave sensor tube says, "What a good pops. He's pretty. He's a pretty good one." Yep. Pops we got we got, we got we got pretty lucky in the old man department, so that's cool. Um, Maddie Matt says, "Yo, Steve, where'd you get that dope hat?" Um, so a lot of people already know this. I get asked this a lot. Every this time hat is like the topic <laughs> of all channeled like happiness so i I hate the beginning of time i hate to i hate to burst your bubble maddie matt but this was an in-store exclusive from lids it was uh i want to say three years ago 2021 and uh we just happened to be in kansas city kansas at the time we were (sighs) camp. yeah and no we weren't even at camp man was it not i thought it was camp we might have been i don't know we were at Legends, and uh, I got it in lids there. It was an in-store exclusive, and I don't think they've made any more. So, I mean, they're probably not easy to find. There's a black one like this as well. I almost went to black, but I like the silver, so I got the silver. Um, maybe on eBay or something. I don't even know what you would search. Honestly, I've not been able to find them. I've kind of looked. I haven't found them. TGZ with a gifted. Appreciate it. Oh, baby. Uh, we also got Gamer Player 3000 with the five bombs. Says, who will be our left tackle? Contracts next year for interior O line. Should we address this now? I think so. I think you got to look at left tackle. Could you, uh, we talked about reworking Tooney before they did that last year, but could you go ahead and extend Creed or, or Trey Smith or something like that? Could that be something that would help the cap space this year or no? Yeah, you could. You could. Geez, I don't know if you want to do it now that we've seen the daggone contracts that come out. But right, but, I mean, is that an yeah, option, though? You could. It, look, if they know, okay, look, just for example, if they know Bolton is the guy of the future and they're going to keep him three, four more years, why couldn't you sign him this year? You don't have to do it next year. You take a little bit of a cap hit. You know what I mean? Like, you right. free some cap up this year. You can maybe make it to where you free a little cap up next year. Maybe you have, like, restructured cash options or something. Kind of like Chris Jones is going to be restructured again next year. I, I firmly believe it. I think next year he hits $35 million on the cap or something. They're going to restructure him somehow. Probably like a Mahomes cash option kind of thing where they'll convert it. But, uh, yeah, I, it wouldn't surprise me, Steve, if you was to get a pick. Whatever you get from LeJarrius Sneed, if LeJarrius Sneed gets, gets traded, I think you need to invest it in the offensive line somehow. Whether we have to get up in the first round to do it, or maybe we just we like somebody in the second round. I don't know, but I think you have to take one early. Whether Patrick Paul from Houston at thirty two, even if you reach on Patrick Paul, you reach on him, I guess. But they need something. I think you need something. Okay. Okay, so I read this somewhere earlier, Mike, and I want to get your opinion on it. Oh, geez. Um, someone was actually saying they were scared of Patrick Paul. Because they reminded them of Alex Leatherwood. From Alabama? Do you, see, do you see any comparison there? Their size, I think. I think maybe their size. Let me go look and see what Alex Leatherwood's size was. Because uh, They dude, said he had long arms and this and this and this, but he ended up being a complete bust. But, but hold up a second. Okay, so Patrick Paul's 6'7", 341. He's ginormous. Uh, Alex Leatherwood was... See if I can find his exact combine stuff. Because Here from what I can recall, I don't remember them being much, very similar. But no, Alex Leatherwood six five three twelve. They're not even in the same ballpark. Patrick Paul is two inches taller and thirty pounds heavier. Yeah, and I also I'm pretty sure, pretty pretty sure his arms are way longer than 33 and 7 eighths. I, I want to think Patrick Paul. Let, let me get that. I'm hoping, you can go on, but I'll. Like, I'm hoping that they were just saying that they were afraid he'd be a bust like Alex Leatherwood. Right. Because I don't remember there being much of a Dude, uh, Patrick a Paul has 36 and a quarter inch arms. Yeah, see, that's a whole different player, right? Chris Jones has the longest arms I've ever seen in my life. They were 33 and a half. This dude has three... Three inch longer arms, dude. You can tell when you see pictures of them. Yeah, um, I mean, 
coming out of, coming out of Houston, not the greatest of, you know, not the greatest of uh, test week in and week oh, yeah. out. But I will say he's he's been a left tackle since he's been there. I trust Patrick Paul. I think Patrick Paul's a mid second round, early second round, and I mean if you reach on him a little bit, you you might have to. Yeah, appreciate the five gamer. Anthony says, "Whoa, I didn't hear Fields got traded to the Steelers." Yeah. <laughs> Uh, this was uh, earlier this evening. I think it's a good move. I think it is too. I think if there's any hope of Fields getting it together and having a, a, a solid career in the NFL, Tomlin's the place to be, right? Like well, it, he, Fields, you would hope he could model his game after Russell Wilson. I mean, that's a pretty that's good what I'm model. Saying. Like, I don't, I'm not big on Russ, and I don't, you know, we've made fun of him for over a year now. Well, he's out of but, Denver, so you can right, cheer for him a little bit but, now. I don't, I'm not going to cheer for him or anything, and I don't think he's like great by any means, but Russ has experience, and Russ was a good quarterback at one point in his career, I think. Um, I think he learned learned from Russell. I do. And I think Russell seems like the type of guy that wouldn't care to mentor. Uh, I, I'm sure it's not going to hit just right that he thought he was going to start, and all of a sudden he's probably not. But um, I think it's a good situation for Justin Fields. I think he definitely won. Right. Uh, David House says, you guys don't remember Jack Stedman, do you? Was he the catcher for the White Sox that named the pitch? <laughs> the masturbator? Yeah. He said, uh, that Wait, was, was uh, that Jake Stedman. <laughs> I think it was Jake Stedman. <laughs> okay. I don't remember Jack Stedman then, but yeah, I remember Jake Stedman. He said, here comes this ball. It's called the Annihilator. He said, if you and hit then- it, you can name it. No, no, no. What was the other one? It was, uh, oh, he kept naming them. And he's like, if you, I don't have a name for this one yet. If you get a piece of it, you can name it. And he hit it completely out of the park. It cracks it's it like 500 yards. I'll call 500 it 500 feet, not 500 yards. <laughs> I'll call it the Master I'll call it the Master <laughs> Man, Major League was such a good movie. It's got to be the best baseball movie of all time. Possibly the best sports movie of all time, in my opinion. Pop said, teach Creed to snap the ball again. Creed had to change hands. He's struggling. <laughs> well, yeah, Mahomes, he was a lefty. Mahomes wanted to snap it right-handed. So he's hes a lefty doing a right job. I wonder why Mahomes wanted him to change. Why, let's put our heads together. What could Creed do in his spare time? If he's a lefty and he needs to be a righty, what could he do in his spare time to get better ambidextrous? The correct answer was to just write or color. You pervert. Or snap. Just snap the ball with your right hand more often. I'm sure he'll be fine. Maybe you can just snap like this. No, nah, he'll be fine. It. He'll be fine. Sam Lofton did not edit nothing now. He went straight for it, baby. <laughs> what? 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 Wait, what did he do? <laughs> oh, he just, he, just, he just Michael Jackson that thing. Oh, man. Man, that's great. He's got to get horned up first. Beat it. Mike, you never sang Ange- uh, Amy a song. I didn't. I think Amy, Amy if you're left. still out there, I don't, I don't care if she's not. Maybe she'll hear it, Mike. But you deserve. she deserves a song. You told her you'd give her one. You haven't done it. And we're about to get off here. So uh, go ahead, brother. Give me something. What do you want to hear? What's a fun song ma- for Amy? Just, you you got to freestyle it about Amy being awesome and... Uh, yeah, I don't know. You can do it. I don't I don't even know where to start. I don't even know where to start. Somebody start throwing some lyrics in the chat for me. Horned up? We'll start with that. I'm just going to start reading the chat. You ready? Oh, I don't know if she wants to hear this one. <laughs> <laughs> the five knuckles shuffle. Yikes. Yikes. Singer uh, something. Be waiting for you. You wake up late to school and you don't want to go. You ask your mom, please, but you still say no. Let's just skip to the good part. You got to fight for your right. There we go. There we go. Chiefs fan says, I guess if we ain't paying, we ain't getting an answer. Nope, probably not. <laughs> Just kidding. What was he asking? I don't know. Casey ain't, it's hard to Casey find ain't them. signing both. 
Bolton, that's fine. Oh, he's talking about something else. I don't even know. <laughs> I was just being an idiot. Man, uh, yeah, Mike, KC, hold on, hold on. Leaf what? Sensor says that you should have sang Crazy by Heart. I think you should have sang um, Crazy by Heart. Man, how's that one go? What is uh what's this song that I want you to sing? You're right probably now? just gonna oh. get like are you just gonna get banned from YouTube for singing everybody's songs? It doesn't matter. I mean it's a it's a We've cover, been banned right? for less. <laughs> <laughs> I mean Dude. Dude, I have a song that you could be singing to what? Amy. Yeah, real says Tyler Guyton or Jordan Morgan first round. I like Tyler Guyton in the first round. Uh, Jordan Morgan, I'm not sold on completely. Some people like him. I think he could be a first round pick. I, I don't know if I love him. I'm going to do a little bit more research with him, though. He said, yes, Chief Gates, he said, don't sing songs. You're going to get copyrighted. Yes, sir. Yeah, but but can you do cover? Covers are different, though, right? There's play, people just do. I don't know. I would like to hear you sing Total Eclipse of the Heart by Bonnie Tyler. Was that her name? Total Eclipse of the Heart. Man. Every now and then I get a little bit lonely. <laughs> <laughs> Turn around. Steve is adopted, I think. I might be. I don't look well, I don't know. I feel no, like the you older look like I, mom's side of the family. I, I don't know. I feel like the older I get, I'm starting to get some pops features. I got chicken legs, my hair is almost gone, and I don't, I could see some some things starting to starting to make sense. Right. Hey, Lewis says Mark <laughs> Bowrichter needs to be checked for brain damage. Yeah, he's an idiot, bro. Yeah, the whole Hollywood's Bako Harvard, but just cost more money is just a horrible take. Jeez. How did he play in the league? I remember he was a fan favorite for a while back in the Vermeil days, Mark Bowrichter. Mark Bowrichter played for, what, two years? And that maybe was it? Year. <laughs> was it three, maybe? I don't know. Uh, I was... Uh, Thinking about that earlier, Mike, the whole Mark Bowrichter thing. And uh, it's wild to me that somebody that for like their entire career, he literally had like 600 yards receiving his entire career. Like Hollywood Brown's going to put up more numbers in this one season than he put up his entire career. And he's out there having the nerve to call him a more expensive. He was here. Yes. Oh, was she? Let's go. Appreciate it. Pops, what is wrong with you? Go to bed. What, what, <laughs> what is happening right now? I was I said I said I got chicken legs from dad. Oh, I just thought he just said that <laughs> as a statement. He's like, hey everybody. Sexy legs over here. <laughs> well, we're going to wrap this bad boy up. If you guys don't care, please hit the like button on the way out. We appreciate you guys, appreciate you guys hanging out with us. Uh, it's been a long day. I'm ready for bed, so I'm going to go uh, chill. I'm going to go kick the feet up. I might watch a movie, Mike. I hear that, man. I hear you got that. any suggestions? Anybody got any suggestions for me to uh, a movie on Netflix or Paramount or Hulu? You name it, I have it. Just throw a suggestion out there for me. I need a good movie to watch. Uh, I watched Space Man with Adam Sandler. I think I'm one of the only people on the planet that liked it. Have I you liked ever it watched a uh, um, We got? Come on. I need some suggestions before everybody leaves. Don't leave me hanging. Don't fall asleep. Ooh, I want to watch Oppenheimer. I do. And I also want to watch, there's another movie that Martin Scorsese did that's on Apple TV with uh, Leonardo DiCaprio. But they're like three-hour movies, and I ain't got three hours, guys. Flower of the Killer Moon. That's it, Joey. I want to watch that. I also want to watch Dune and Dune 2. I haven't seen those, but they're all three-hour movies. And I just never have three hours to sit down and watch. What is uh, it? Tuck, Del, uh, Tucker and Dell versus Evil about time. That movie is a classic. Love it. Do you know uh, Horchata? <laughs> what? I don't want to. I'm, I'm not going to. a gonna, good movie. I'm not going to allow you uh, to have a punchline there. I feel like you were making a joke. Okay. I'm sorry. All right. Hmm. I don't know. Yeah, keep them coming. I'm going to look back at the comments later. I'm going to look at these movie names, by the way. Appreciate you guys. 
Uh, but anyway, yeah, Mike, you got anything <laughs> left for him? What? What are you giggling about now? Cards movie suggestion. What was it? I can't even say it. I didn't see we're, it. We're banned totally if I say it. <laughs> oh, I'm man. sorry. I gotta get out of here. Yeah, I probably won't. On that, that note, guys. Hey, look, if any Legarius Sneed uh, news breaks in the middle of the night, I want to let you know I'm not going to get up and cover that. <laughs> we'll just react to it afterwards. Not going to do a live one. Uh, I think they'll hold out for the whole weekend. I don't think they'll announce it on a Sunday. Are they going to announce it on the Lord's Day, Steve? I don't know what they'll do. I don't know. I don't think you announce Sneed on the Lord's Day. I don't think you disrespect it like that. I think you wait. I think you wait till Monday morning. Maybe. I don't know. But anyway, appreciate you guys. Thanks for hanging out with us. Go Chiefs. Yeah, go Chiefs. I, 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 I,